What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Games Over Plastic. This is episode number nine, I think. It is episode nine. Uh, I am Midnight. As always, I am joined by my two amazing co-hosts, the best gamers in the industry. We have the man, the myth, the legend. We have the master chef, the guy who's whipping up eight course meals every Sunday, and I want to come over and have some. Sean Mason, how you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Uh, the door's always open for anyone. Anytime anyone wants to come by, more than welcome, as long as you're in Massachusetts. <laughs> Might make be worth a great it. trip up to make the great trip up to the state of ma yeah it might be worth it i come up there get some sean mason cooking and maybe go to a celtics game they're in the finals are you a celtics fan no you're not a celtics fan they're but they're from boston what's going on okay and (laughs) do you have a basketball team i do who are the los angeles clippers i actually have a tattoo of them on my leg Okay, all right. Yep. Kind of, kind of far Clippers from fan Mass. my whole life. Yep, been a Clippers fan my whole life. Who they they actually lost to the Mavericks, unfortunately. All right, I respect it. Um, and last but not least, we have the master of graphics, the Indian Live Service gaming maestro, the man who works nine hundred million hours a week, and somehow he hasn't died yet. Thankfully, Hodge, how you doing, sir? I'm doing good. I'm a little tired, but it's the weekend, so I'm happy. But, Sean, there was one. I can't remember what the food was you posted. It was like two or three weeks ago where, like, every time you post food, it all looks delicious. But sometimes it's like that's not something I'd order on a menu if I was at a restaurant kind of thing. It's like not I wouldn't eat it, but it's not what I look for. But this one, I can't remember what it was. Like, two or three weeks ago, I was like, every single one of those things is what I would order if I was at a restaurant. And it was it was your best one yet. I just wish I could remember it off the top of my head right now. I think but. it was the was it the I think it was the balsamic chicken, the mac salad, the cornbread. Yeah, that was it. That one was yeah, that looks oh, really that, good. Yeah, that was that was some banger. I think yeah, it was, you might it was, have like it was, s'mores was, bars in there too or something. Yeah, but. there was some s'mores bars. Yeah, it was delicious. Oh, yeah, yeah, I one. love it. That that, one. Those s'mores bars are easy to make. Very easy to make. Oh, really? um, the marshmallow is homemade. I don't. I don't use like you know. I don't melt marshmallow. I make my own. Mar- it's four ingredients, guys. Come on. What are the four Pretty ingredients? Easy. Sugar. Uh, it's the, like, you, does a chef ever give away his secrets? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, it's uh, egg whites, uh, sugar, cream of tartar, and vanilla. What happens if you use the whole egg instead of the egg white? Is that does it become well, an abomination or is it still good? It won't make. It won't. It won't get that consistency of the. It won't get that fluffiness. It, yeah. Well. To make it, you have to like mix it all together over like in like a double boiler. You have to get it really hot, but you have to you have to do it like very quickly, and you can't let it sit. You have to constantly be whisking, or the eggs will start to cook. The egg whites will start to cook, and mm. it, it's it's really easy. It's really not that big of a deal. Okay, so let's get into this. So while you're cooking these masterful spreads, and you're are you like listening to a podcast, or what do you do to keep yourself entertained while you're whisking your your marshmallows? It, it really depends on the – like during football season, I have a TV in my kitchen and I just watch football while I'm doing it. Um, and it also depends on like the meal. Some meals are like oh, like I'm in there all day. Other meals I can let like sit. Like, you know, I have stuff to do. But I usually listen to a podcast. I, I have a couple podcasts I listen to. Sometimes I listen to music. It really depends. You know, whatever floats my boat. Usually start pretty early around, you know, 8 a.m. Start cooking. Start getting it done. Right on, right on. Well, one of these days we'll have to uh, we'll have to come over and, and join you for one of those meals. They look fantastic. Um, all right. And then uh, speaking of sports, man, I can't wait for football is getting closer. Man, it's June now, and uh, yeah, twelve just a couple 12 more Saturdays months away. Twelve Saturdays away till college football. A couple more wait. months. I can't wait for my Ohio State Buckeyes to play, and I can't wait for my Pittsburgh Steelers. Both of them are going to win the championship this year, and it's going to be fantastic. And I can't wait for, I really, really, really can't wait for the NCAA 25, uh, college football 25 video game. It's finally coming back. It's been gone since 2013. I've been waiting so long. This has been almost like a Skyrim wait, waiting for college football to come back. And uh, I'm so thrilled. I'm so beyond thrilled. I'm going to be on that. A- every episode that we do, like what we're playing, it's going to be, in. it's going to be like Hodge with uh, Helldivers. <laughs> it's going to be me with NCAA football. All right. So anyways, guys, let's get into this. So this is Games Over Plastic, the podcast, which is for the agnostic gamers coming to you on all audio ga- uh, audio podcast services everywhere. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Overcast, 
Pocket Cast, every cast you can find us. We're also available on YouTube at youtube.com slash at Games Over Plastic. Just search for Games Over Plastic or check the description in the audio. There's a link right to it. You can see the video version has cameras and fancy graphics and fun stuff in there. So definitely check that out. Um, what else? It comes every other every other Monday. We're bringing it to you. And let's go ahead and jump into some non-gaming fun stuff. This has been an ADHD episode already. I need some coffee. Um, let's go ahead and start with you, Sean. Something happened at work you wanted to talk about. Something kind of interesting, huh? Yeah, so yesterday, it was kind of a wild day yesterday. So I had no idea what these things were, but they're called gel blasters, which is, it's kind of like a combination of like an airsoft gun and a BB gun, except it shoots like, instead of like a BB pellet, it shoots like, almost like a paintball that explodes but it's like gel i don't know but it hurts like a bb gun i guess i don't know i I, i've never been shot by one but yesterday all of a sudden we're we're you know middle of fifth period which is like the lunch period and um so i have the first lunch of the day so i'm sitting there in my room and all of a sudden i hear we are going into lockdown we are going into a lockdown there is a shooter in the building and i'm like freaking out So I'm like, start freaking out. I don't have any kids with me. So I'm like, all right, well, at least I don't have any kids. So I like barricade the door. Like I had to like push stuff in front of the door. And I'm like, all right, this is interesting. And then, you know, I'm sitting there. And then it turns out that, long story short, that a kid stood up in the middle of class. And he pulled out a gel blaster that he painted black. And he removed the, like, there's like an orange tip to it. He removed the orange tip. And stood up and said, "I'm going to shoot everyone." Wasn't really loaded. Uh, the kid is a sophomore. I don't. I never had him Jesus in class. Christ, dude. Um, yeah, and people started freaking out. Obviously, right? For, um, yeah, no shit. I would. Too. Yeah. <laughs> and the cops ended up coming in. They did arrest him. It was on the news. Um, we didn't have. To, we didn't go home though. We continued our day after that um, because they realized it was a like it wasn't an actual gun. So like, yeah. he didn't really pose a threat, and it was unloaded. But yeah, it was absolutely wild. We were in lockdown for like an hour and a half. And, what happened? Um, what happened to that idiot kid? Is he going to get expelled? I would expel him. Oh yeah, yeah. He will never come back to school. Um, Good. He'll never be back in our school. He got arrested. He got taken out and hang. It was on the news and everything. It was it was crazy. But yeah, it was like I had never never. I mean, you hear about things like this and like you know, there's always people like, oh, it could happen at your school, and you're always like, it's never going to happen at my school. And then like all of a sudden this happened, and we're like, oh my gosh, but. Luckily, like no one got hurt. Everyone's safe. And it was just it was more of like an like a prank by the kid. But like, I don't know. The kid's kind of I can't believe he did that. I'm trying to put myself in the in the shoes of a student. Like, let's say you're in class. Right. And a fellow student pulls out what looks like a gun from a backpack and is like, oh, I'm going to shoot everyone. What do you do? I almost feel like all the guys should just immediately jump him and like try to get the gun away from him so that he can't start opening fire. I don't know. Like everybody swarm him. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. It's 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 difficult because like you're never like putting that like you don't know what you'd actually do when you're put in that situation. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah, so that, that happened yesterday. So that was an interesting Friday. That is definitely interesting. Well, we're glad that it wasn't a real shooter. That's good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the the joys of living in America. Um, still would much rather live in America than somewhere like uh, UK or Canada, though. That's for sure. Uh, I'll take the country. risk of getting shot <laughs> any day over living in those shitholes. But uh, yeah, I uh, at my high school, this was a year or two ago, I think. Uh, so obviously I well graduated, but um, there was a kid got arrested in my hometown because they found a bunch of bomb making stuff in his house. And apparently he, they found like his manifesto where he was planning to blow up the school and install this shit. Jesus. Like Jesus. Yeah. So thankfully that was also stopped. <laughs> so my school was not a national news. Dude. I don't know what's wrong with people these days. Like this stuff did not exist. I'm old, right? I'm over 40. Um, this it's stuff did not exist. This stuff did not exist when I was a kid. It wasn't until Columbine. Columbine was like the first school shooting that I can ever remember. And I think that was in like 99. Um, Yeah, 99, April 20th. Before that, there was like, there was never, ever any shootings that I know of. Um, And now it's like people are like just insane. These kids are crazy um, and they want, I don't know, they want attention. They're insane. And they just, they're just doing it. It's really sad. Yeah. The state of the world. I think it's all the meds they're on, if I'm being honest. The meds. Maybe I'm, I'm going to blame social media somehow, too. I don't know how, but I just always want to blame social media because I feel like it's ruining society. Well, there's also, you know, there's always copycats when something happens because they want their little moment of infamy. Yeah. 
but yeah but well, i don't want to bring the mood down but yeah so that's what happened yeah yeah well All right. thankfully nothing happened no one was hurt and that kid's yeah. out of the picture now so All that's right. good well, look- Let's go ahead and bring the mood up a little bit. Let's get into some TV and movie stuff because Hodge and I have been busy. Um, Hodge, let's go to you first. I see you've been watching some movies and stuff. What, what's been going on with you? Yeah, uh, last weekend I went and saw Furioso with my brother. Uh, it was it was all right. I thought it was it was it was worse than Fury Road. I know everyone's like you should compare the two. I'm like, well, it's just in the same series and it's a prequel to the first one, so I think it's fair game to <laughs> to compare them. But uh, like Anya Taylor Joy was good in it. The girl who played the younger version of her, I don't know if they computerized her face to look like her or something, but she looked just like Anya Taylor Joy. Um, the action was all as always cool, but this one just felt way more green screeny than the original one. Like I know they were hard on the practical effects in Fury Road, but Furiosa, it felt very green screeny. It was way, it was way too long of a movie. It was two and a half hours when I was told that I was like, are you kidding me? I don't want to be at the theater for three hours, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was all right. I, I wouldn't say like, there's a lot of people out there like, it's the best movie of the year. I'm like. Well, it's a pretty low bar. There hasn't been much out this year, but also I don't think so. It's it's uh, not I didn't. It was it was all right. It's not a movie like I'll watch. I'll rewatch Fury Road over and over. I don't know if I'll ever watch Furiosa again, but I definitely didn't dislike it. It was just all right. I don't know. Did either of you see Furiosa or have any desire to see it? Sean? Um, I might see it. Um, I know my dad's a big fan of Mad Max. We like to go to the movies together. That is one thing I do like. Like I do like watching movies. Mm-hmm. Um, not like a big TV guy, but I do like movies. Um, so we might go, I might go see it with him. Um, he's already just seen love it, going but... to the theater. <laughs> yeah, I do. I actually, I worked in a movie theater in high school. Um, oh, nice. so, and it's like the one that we, like, I can still go, to, I still go to now. So like, I mm-hmm. always walk by, like I worked at the concession stand. Like I'll walk by where like my station was, but that, that was my station. Even though <laughs> it was like, you know, like 10 years ago, 12 years ago. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's really not mine. But I worked in a movie. Yeah, theater. I, lo- I love going to the movies. It's fun. Yeah, I worked in a movie theater for about two months because I just needed a second income because, you know, this economy is just so great. This was five, six years ago, something like that. I can't remember how long ago it was, but I was working there and they had and since I was one of the only people there who worked there who was over 21, they had me work the bar, which is fine. I don't care. I've worked in bars before. And I was a bouncer in college or whatnot, so. I was like, that's fine. I'll do that. But then they had me work at, I told them, I was like, I want under 20 hours a week because I already work a full-time job. I'm just, I just need, you know, secondary income. And they kept having me work like 25, 30 hours. I was like, that's, I told you 20 or less, like stop doing this. And finally they had me come in work on a Saturday morning, like 9am. They have me there working the bar. I'm like, who's coming to a theater at 9am on a Saturday to drink? I don't know. You tell us. Priced beers. No one, showing is up. no one is the answer. There was no one. I stood there. <laughs> and so I was kind of on my phone a little bit and I didn't have my apron fully on because literally I'm just kind of standing there. And the guy comes up. He's like, you need to put your apron apron on. I'm like, it is on. He's like, oh, it's not on right. I'm like, oh, my God. So I put it on. He's like, you stop looking at your phone. I'm like, I'm not doing anything. He goes, you could sweep. I'm like, we just opened. There's nothing to sweep. Like, we're just sitting here. And so finally he comes up and he's like, I'm going to write you up. I'm like don't bother. I quit. And I just walked out. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not doing this. <laughs> like, um, this is, this is so stupid. <laughs> um, fun. The, I, there was some good perks about working with the movie theater though. Like I got free tickets. I got five free tickets to, um, yeah. every month. Um, yeah, that was nice. You know, like, you know, like the giant display movie posters, mm-hmm. like we could take <clears throat> anyone we wanted. Like we just take them. And I, I worked there. Like I, my, my first week there was like when dark Knight rises came out. So oh, I have yeah. a Dark Knight Rises one. I have an Avengers one. Nice. I just have a bunch of. I have a bunch of. You remember that movie After Earth with Will Smith? Like it's a terrible movie. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. isn't his kid in yeah, it with, with him? Jaden Smith's in yeah. it? Yeah, it was like 2013. I was really. I was a huge. I'm like a huge Will Smith fan, and I was so hyped for that movie. So I got one of those, and I remember I I, I got to see it early because they had like I we, some of like we got to see movies early, and I remember I was like, wow, that movie was terrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. When I was working there. This would actually let me know when it was. I was uh, Black Panther was in theaters when I was okay. working there because so like I remember I saw that because yeah. when I was cleaning theaters, you know, you'd have to sit there standing, wait for the credits to end while everyone's leaving so you can get in there and clean it before the next showing. And so I saw that after credit scene of Winter Soldier, like waking up in a in a tent or whatever. And I'm like, we need you to fight or whatever, like whatever the hell happened. I saw that thing a hundred fucking times. <laughs> I was like, I 
I don't want to see this scene anymore. But yeah, in fact, it wasn't a it was an easy job. I mean, it paid Iowa minimum wage, which was like five bucks at the time or something like that. So it was mm. I was making more money working one day at my other job than a than a full paycheck at this other one. But it's just secondary income. But yeah, it was an easy job. It was cool getting the free like tickets and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, when that when that little power trip manager came up to me freaking out, I'm like, I'm he's like eight years younger than me. I'm like, I'm done. Fuck. <laughs> like, I'm done with this. I'm not working here anymore. But yeah, anyways, didn't yeah, I, uh, so much, but no, that's that's fine. Um, yeah, I've never seen Mad Max. Uh, personally, I haven't seen Fury Road or uh, Fury Road's really good. Furiosa or anything. Um, I never played the game either. Um, I'm either. not familiar I at all. Not familiar at all. I played the game. Yeah, I, played I think guys, it's. But. I think it was a PS Plus game, so I think I have it. There. It was a couple of years ago, but I remember I got it the day it came out. Actually, oh yeah, I heard it was. Yeah. I heard it was pretty good. It just was kind it of was. stingy, it was good, according yeah. to people. Like yeah. a little bit of. I might uh might get to it one day, but you guys have seen my backlog. I've shared it. I got like thirty plus games on my backlog that I'm waiting to get to. So it's uh, maybe yeah. I'll throw it in there. But um, you had another yeah. movie too, Hodge. Yeah, I just uh, I was bored yesterday, so I bought a I bought an OLED. I don't know if I I think I was at, since the last episode that I got it. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I got it before. I don't know. But anyway, I got an OLED because once once you go OLED, it's legit impossible to go back because they impossible. look so good. And so I have this at my parents' house back up in Illinois. I have um, a seventy seven inch OLED, which is just a monster of a TV, and it's. I, I just couldn't move it down here because I moved just the essentials when I moved down here to Texas. And so I had just had this little crappy like 40 inch TV. And I was just like, I just I'm making good money now with this new job. And everything. so I was like, yeah, fuck it. I'm, and it, there was a Memorial Day TV sale. So I was like, I can get a 48 inch for under a grand. So I bought it, you know, went there and bought it. And I bought it to also because I wanted to play a game that I'll be talking about later. So I knew that I would need because I I'll get to it when we get to the game. But yeah, so. Yesterday, I was just bored and I was getting ready to go to bed because I worked super late. So I was just going to watch a movie and go to sleep. And I so I watched Raimi Spider-Man, the, the original 2001 Spider-Man movie. That movie just it holds up perfectly. It's awesome. Raimi is such a great director. I for the first time last year, I watched all of his uh, Evil Dead, Army of Darkness. Uh, I've I had actually seen Drag Me to Hell before, but I rewatched it just to kind of go through all the Raimi movies and his direction style. His directing style is so cool. I love his movies. And so going back to Spider-Man, which is also just a genuinely great movie. I just, I adore that trilogy. Even the third one, even though it's the worst one, I I love that trilogy. So I'm going to watch two and three here probably this weekend. Yeah. Right on. Right on. Yeah. The OLED, once you go, once you go OLED, you can never go back. Um, Mm -hmm. Like I can immediately tell if I see like a picture of somebody posts of their setup, I can immediately tell if they don't have an OLED. Um, Like someone posted a meme uh, the other day where it was like a dude in like an empty apartment laying down playing like a video game on a TV. And all I could think was like, he needs to get an OLED. Uh, Because as soon as you see those washed out blacks and like the super Mm -hmm. bright screen and stuff where it should be like pitch black, it's just like, ugh. Oh, yeah, bro, what is exactly. this? Like, you got to get an OLED, bro. Fix your life. Fix your mm-hmm. life, people. Get an OLED. All right, save up. It's worth it. It'll change your life. It'll make your gaming so much better. Um, and you'll never go back. Like, I, I would never in a million years consider like a QLED or or anything like that. Like, get out of here with that trash. I do have um, a little like 32 inch QLED that that was my secondary because I wanted a TV next to my huge TV just to watch two games at once during football season. And the QLED the is a it. really good looking thing. It's just I wouldn't watch movies or yeah. play games on it. But for just watching TV, it's it's perfectly fine. Like watching games as a secondary screen. They look really they're bright. They look good. But yeah, OLEDs are just unmatched. Yeah, it's fine for like streaming YouTube or like watching mm-hmm. a, a, yeah, a video exactly. or something. But like if you're watching a film or playing a video game with like dark environments and stuff, you definitely want that OLED. Yeah, um, exactly. Cause like right now I'm just on, this is just a normal, like ultra wide monitor here. It's not an OLED, um, mm-hmm. but it, it looks fine. It's okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so let me move on to me. Um, I have watched a couple things as well. Starting off with TV. I finally finished Shogun, the series on Hulu. Um, really good series. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, it was like an eight, nine out of 10 series for me. Um, I loved it. Um, One criticism I have, and I'm not going to spoil anything, but I'm just going to say that the ending was pretty rushed. 
Um, it really felt like at the very ending, they were like, they could have threw in another episode or two and really kind of actually shown what happens, but they did like the super abridged version. They're like, okay, so this mm. happens kind of semi off screen and this happens kind of semi off screen. And now we have a resolution and it's like, okay, that's kind of weird, but um, it was still great though. And a great acting, great story, awesome setting. And I'm glad that they're going to be doing a second and a third season. I just hope they don't jump the shark and game, game, uh, <laughs> what is it? Game of Thrones it. Yeah. We don't want oh, that. Yeah. Um, I well, also fun. Oh, go ahead. This, oh, I was gonna say it's the same thing as like when when shows are successful and they like force a second season. It was it happened with Westworld. The first season was amazing. The second season was horrible, mm -hmm. and then the third season was even worse. And the, uh, True Detective, same thing. It was a mini series. The first it, it was an amazing show. They forced a second season with a new cast. It was terrible. Third season I didn't even watch, but I heard it was just as bad. Uh, and then a fourth I've heard mixed, but yeah, it, it just sucks when, cause this was, it was listed as a mini series. It was supposed to be just a 10 episode show that came and went and that people enjoyed. But since it was successful, like, Oh, we can make more. And it's like, just let it be. And I, so I hate when they do that, but I, I mean, hopefully it's good. I don't know. I mean, I had hopefully. low hopes for like house of the dragon and that show blew me away after game of Thrones. So, you know, it, they, yeah, just a possibility. It's good. I love House of the Dragon. That was really good. There were mm. some very big moments in that, which was awesome. Oh, yeah. It was a great show. Um, I'm looking forward to season two. Mm -hmm. um, all right. And then I watched Dune part two. Finally, I didn't see it in theaters. I planned on watching it in theaters. Like my, me and my brother had plans. We were going to go. We were going to watch it together. But then mm -hmm. something came up and like he couldn't make it. So I was just like, ah, fucking, I'm not going to go by myself. Um, so I was like, I'll just wait until it uh, it comes to streaming or whatever, and I'll watch it. Because I already knew what was going to happen because I, I read the book. But uh -huh. um, And it was very true to the book. Um, there was a couple small differences that were a little different. But for the most part, they pretty much stuck to the book. Uh, Dune Part 2, I thought, was, was quite awesome. I really enjoyed it a lot. Um, it wasn't a perfect movie or anything, um, but it was very good. Um, I enjoyed it. It's like a 9 out of 10 for me. Totally. Yeah, totally enjoyed it. The the quiz hat, quiz hat, hat -a -rack. Um, I love it. I just love Dude, Dune. The, it's a great series. I actually, that was the first thing I watched on my OLED when I got it because that black and white planet in 4K on a 4K oh, yeah. disc is unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, it's Getty so Prime. Good. Yeah, very cool. That's the the Harkonnen planet, I believe. Yeah. Um, Harkonnen, very Harkonnen, Harkonnen. Yeah, it's yeah. very cool, man. It was it was really good, and I enjoyed it. Genova. Great acting, Geneva. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> All right, so that yeah. was Dune two. Um, Sean, have you seen Dune two? Yeah, I, well, I thought it thought in theaters when the day came out. I I love Dune. It's one of my favorite books of all time. Um, nice. That, I echo what you said. It's not a perfect movie, but. The, it, it does stay pretty true to the book. Um, I love the first one. Actually, I think I like this one a little bit more than the part one. Um, but yeah, overall, it's a great movie. Highly suggest it. Yeah, no doubt. I'm excited for the third film that's coming because they're going to start to yep. branch out uh, beyond Ar Arrakis, I think. I, I, I don't know. Show's though. good. Oh, yeah. There's good. They're doing a show, too. They're marveling this. They're Star Dune Wars. Prophecy. They're, doing a show. they're doing a show. Yeah, an HBO oh. Max show. Dune Prophecy, I think it's called. And it's about the sisterhood. The like, Benny Gesserit. Yeah. Yeah. Which is cool. I mean, right? that's a cool subject. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it looks like Denny Villeneuve is like part of it. So as long as he kind of has his touch on it, then it should be pretty good. I mean, it looks it, the trailer looked good. So yeah. I hope it is. All right. And last but not least, as promised on episode number eight, I let everybody know that I have never seen in my entire life, 41 years on this planet. Oh, that's disgusting to say. I hate saying that. I'm so old. <laughs> um, I have never seen a uh, Studio Ghibli film. So I challenged myself and you guys helped me that I was finally going to watch one. And as suggested, you guys said I should watch My Neighbor Totoro. So I did. I watched My Neighbor Totoro on the OLED, of course. It looked great, actually. Um, even though it's an old film, it looked like it was like remastered. It was like widescreen, and it was really good, really crisp. Um, and it was a great movie. I really enjoyed it. Um, great story, great characters, very wholesome. Um, and I just really enjoyed it a lot. That was an awesome movie. Um, I think I might have to watch some more. I, I might, I'll have to check out that uh, Princess Mononoke one, too, that you also yeah, recommended. Best one. Yeah, yeah, that was my favorite one. one. So I think in this coming two week stretch that we have between episodes, I'm going to try to watch um, Princess Mononoke. Um, and so we'll talk about that next time. Um, and also 
Uh, and one that Hodge, I think you uh, you put me on that there's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie on mm. Max or something. Like, oh, uh, that movie? You... No, it's it's on Paramount. Yeah, oh, Paramount. Oh, okay, oh, on Paramount. Yeah, it's the newest one, awesome. right? The newest yeah, animated one. Awesome. The I'm not mutant... even a Turtles guy, and I liked it. I think it's Mutant Mayhem is what it's called. Yeah, um, yeah. The animation style, like I'm anyone who knows me knows that I actually wanted to be an animator for a long time. Like that's what is playing. What is playing? <laughs> we have music playing. Don't worry anyway. about it. Anyway, professional uh, podcasting guys. I hit yeah. a button. Hey, let's keep it moving. Hey, that was beautiful though. I didn't know there was music. Yeah, every time I say something emotional, you got to play that piano. Yeah, um, sad part. But but uh, <laughs> no, yeah. Anyone who knows me knew I wanted to be an animator. I like. I grew up uh, in love with Peanuts, Calvin and Hobbes. Like mm-hmm. I was. I I was the every single morning before school. I would read this the paper and read the comics. Like I wanted to be a comic strip artist or an an. Like I was obsessed with cartoons growing up and so i didn't go to school for it but any movie that has like great animation i'm obsessed with like this into the spider verse movies that animation is yeah it's really good unmatched like it's beautiful especially no wood but um uh but yeah the mutant mayhem the animation it's a very cart it's a very cool cartoony like painterly animation it's so cool looking but the movie itself is also really funny and really cute so it's a definitely a, a movie worth checking out so yeah definitely check it yeah. out yeah all right. So good stuff. Good times. Shout out to these great movies and TV shows. Shout out to uh, fake school shooters. We're glad that they're not real. Um, and yeah, it is uh, 26 Let's minutes in here. <laughs> Let's not shout that out. It is 26 <laughs> minutes into the episode, boys. This is a gaming podcast. Shall we talk about some games now? What do you think? Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's keep talking about TV. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and get into what we are playing section of the show. Um, I'll go ahead and start us off here. Um, so for me, there are two games right now that I am playing currently. Uh, let me, we got to get some time stamping going on. Sean, I, I got it. Up. I got it. I got it. I got it. I thanks, bro. Sorry. Thank, thanks, brother. So for me, I'm playing two games. One of them I beat. I talked about this last time. Uh, XCOM 2, War of the Chosen. Uh, when we last spoke, I mentioned that I was getting a little bit annoyed with some of the enemies, like the, the lost zombie hordes and stuff. But I said that I would stick with it. And stick with it, I did. Um, I beat XCOM 2 War of the Chosen, and let me tell you, I loved it. This game was awesome. Um, The deeper that I got into the game, those annoying enemies became less annoying because my soldiers got more powerful. I got better guns. I got better armor. They weren't a problem. I was mowing them down. It was a great game. Awesome story. I'm a huge XCOM fan. I'm a big uh, TRPG fan, tactical role-playing game, Um, you know, XCOM-like games. Uh, Wasteland 3 light games. I love those. Um, so I really enjoyed it. Fun, challenging combat. Um, I'm not ashamed to admit that I played this game on easy. It was still hard. Like XCOM is a series that will beat your ass. Like it, it, it is a cruel game. Like, uh, like it, it tries to screw you over. It does its best to screw you over. Um, the final battle, even on easy, like I almost died because I was just getting swarmed. Like they were just bringing in nonstop drops of aliens. Um, and I finally found out that you have to just kind of ignore the swarms that are coming at you and just go after the boss. Um, so I guess that makes it easier if you know that I didn't, I was fighting everybody, man, but it was a great game. Great story. Awesome variety of aliens that you get to fight and kill. Um, cool factions, fun missions. You know, you get a downed UFO. You have to go land and take out the aliens. And then then you get their uh, their technology and research it. And then you incorporate it into weapons and armor that your soldiers can use. And it's just awesome, dude. XCOM is great. So shout out to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen and shout out to uh, Lord Cognito who recommended this game to me. Like I said, I asked him what uh, what his favorite XCOM was because mine was uh, Enemy Within. Um, but he said War of the Chosen was the best. So I was like, well, I need to play that. And it was good. It was really good. I think I still probably like Enemy Within more personally, but they're great. Um, and then lastly, we have the game that I am currently playing. Um, you guys haven't played XCOM, so there, I'm, you got nothing to say on that, right? No. I own um, Enemy Within. I actually do own Enemy Within. Though. Oh, like dude! I, someone, some, someone gifted it to me on Steam. Enemy Within is the best one. It's so good. You should play it sometime. Um, if you're worried about the challenge, just put it on easy. It's fine. Um, I don't play games on easy. No, oh. I'm, <laughs> I'm a real gamer. Sean is a Chad. I respect that. I respect that. Yeah, XCOM may change your mind though when your soldiers are getting massacred. <laughs> but uh, it's fun though. 
what I like about XCOM, like I've said, is you get to name your soldiers. Um, so like I always name them after people I know. I got my dad, my mom, my family, my brother. You know, you got your girlfriend or whatever. You can put your wife. You can put her out there and, you know, they can rank up and everything. And then there's permadeath, too. So if they die, sad. You either lose them or you, or you do some saves coming. That's a choice you have they to make. They die. They die in real life. They do. If he dies, he dies. <laughs> All right. Great movie. So. Let me move on uh, to the game that I'm playing right now, which I'm really liking a lot. I am playing Yakuza Kiwami 2. I, I am a big Yakuza fan. I'm a big Sega uh, fan. RGG Studio. Uh, Ryu Gatoku or whatever the heck it is. I don't know. RGG. They're awesome. I love their games. Uh, Yakuza Kiwami 2 is really good. I am 13 hours in. I'm in chapter 12, I want to say. Not sure how many chapters there are. I'm not going to look it up. I'm just going in blind. I want to, I want to be surprised when they. When, I don't want to, you know. Sometimes you know, like there's like two chapters left, so you know it's about to wind down. I don't want that. I just want to be like, uh, well, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. This game is awesome. Really great story. Like the story of Yakuza games are always so good. You always have like this really serious, high tension murder mystery, betrayal, uh, high stakes mafia story, right? Um, but then it's juxtaposed into this world where there's all this goofy stuff and you have these these random side quests. There's these mini games. There's a mini game where you're like running a uh, a uh, what do they call it? A cabaret club. So you have to you have all these dudes coming in and then you can see what they're into. And then you have to assign the right girl to their table to keep them happy and have them buy more drinks so you can get more money. And then your girls rank up and stuff. So that's a mini game. And then there's another mini game where you have um, Goro Majima, which is one of the one of the main side characters in the series. He's got he now all of a sudden he's X. He's ex Yakuza. Now he's running a construction company in this. So he's running a construction company and he's always getting attacked. So you, it's like a tower defense. It's almost like a uh, what's that mini game that we, Fort Condor? It's like a Fort Condor game. You got like these waves of enemies coming on the construction site and you have to place down your little construction soldiers to defend the site. It's fun and it's goofy as hell. So I really enjoy it. That's what I'm playing. Yakuza Kiwami 2 and XCOM 2 War of the Chosen was beaten. Have you guys played any of the Yakuza games? Are you into that stuff? I've played Yakuza 0. Um, That's a good one. It's the only one I've played. Yeah, it was, I really, really liked it. But uh, I've heard, like, I, I, I want to get to all of them. And I yeah. definitely want to get to Like a Dragon and Infinite Wealth because those are definitely right up my alley. Um, but I really like 0 and I do plan on playing, playing more of them. Uh, I might just jump right to Like a Dragon, though. I mean, you can because the like a dragon is kind of like a new a new spin all series with a different um, main character. Um, but I do think those old ones are awesome, though. Uh, like so you beat zero. So the next two for you would be K- Kiwami one and Kiwami two are the next yeah. two. And those are both awesome games. And they were also both remastered recently. So like the graphics and everything is pretty modern. Like uh, it looks good. It's just not like you're playing like some ancient game. So. Um, I would recommend at least I would recommend playing all of them in order. But do you, though? You know, time is limited, unfortunately. So but I love Yakuza. It's fun. They always like I said, they always have a crazy, deep, serious story and then just some real crazy side stuff, (laughs) like just the wildest stuff you'll ever see. And it's just a good time. Um, But that's it. That's what I'm playing. Um, Let's go ahead and pass it on over to you, Sean. Um, Okay. What what are you playing? Yeah. All right. Oh, so I beat three games over the last two weeks. Um, I beat. I, I, I talked about uh, Yayuden Chronicles 100 Heroes last time. I finished it. Um, it was great. I, I enjoyed it. Um, not my favorite JRPG. Um, I actually, it, it was really good, but I don't think it met my expectations. I'm a huge Suikoden fan. Um, and this is like, this is essentially the Suikoden game that we never got. Like they, uh, because they're now a mobile studio. That makes those games. They own like the Suikoden makes mobile stuff now. Um, but there's a uh, 120 heroes to choose from, and you can recruit them all. Um, each one has its unique in quotes story, but a lot of it is just like, oh, copy and paste here, new skin. Um, the combat is what really drives this game. It's turn based combat, but they kind of throw their own spin on it. And they have a there's a unique section when you can do like a one on one duel where you have like one member of your party versus like. Uh, like a super boss and it's just you versus them um it's pretty the combat's challenging at times but it can get overly easy especially if you grind if you grind a lot like the game should be simple for you um i didn't recruit all 120 uh, heroes i played on switch i ended up recruiting 93 of them 
Um, if I ever decide if I want to go back, I'll probably like I'd go back and do a 120 because I don't like to play games with guides my first time through. So obviously I miss some. Um, but you can, they do, there's like a point of no return. So you can always just, you know, boot it up again and start right from there. Um, the story is all right, like I said, but it's like, it's a mile wide and an inch deep. Like you don't get a ton of like, the characters are very shallow. Mm-hmm. Um, as, again, though, there's 120 of them. So it's, it's really hard to d- dig deep into it, but it's like a classic JRPG story, like factions at war. You're fighting for one side. They're the good guys. The evil guys are trying to dominate the world. It's very cookie cutter JRPG story, but the gameplay is what stood out to me. And I like, I love turn-based combat. So that was awesome for me, but there are turn-based games that I think do it better. Like I think Octopath does turn-based so much better. I think the original Final Fantasy VII does it a lot better. I think a lot of the Final Fantasy games do it better. Um, I think Nino Kuni 1 does it better. Um, So, but it was enjoyable, and if I ever do play it again, I think I'd play it again on PlayStation. If it, if it ever came to, like, PS Plus, like, I would probably get it, and I might be like, yeah, maybe I'll go for the Platinum, and I'd go, I'd follow a guide and get it. But for right now, I think I'm good. I probably won't buy it on PlayStation. Where, uh, where did you play it? I played it on Switch. Oh, on Switch, okay. Yeah, it's, it's a great handheld game. Oh, it's a great handheld game. Because it's, like, uh, one of those, like... You just, it, it, turn-based combat. It, it's not... Gra- the graphics are awesome. Like, it's not, like, a big three. It's, like... It's like almost like 2.5 HD, like not two and not like 2D HD, but like two and a half D HD kind of. It's it's pretty cool. I liked it. Um, okay. You, you so any- yeah, I do. Um, hi, do you have anything to say about Hundred Heroes? Probably not. No. <clears throat> okay. So this is a game that I'm inter- I have been interested in playing because I was really because I I have said before I do like uh I do like some JRPGs and I like kind of like the old school art style. I like that HD 2D. I th- think the Uden Chronicles it looks it looks gorgeous like the art style that they have. Yeah. And that really caught my eye, but you having this non-enthusiastic review is kind of giving me pause like um so there's 120 heroes and you said the stories are pretty shallow. Are there any like core heroes that have deeper stories? Um or is it just um, all shallow? It, they're all very very shallow. Um <sighs> it's kind of annoying because like, you'd uh, think like there'd be like the standout ones that you have like all game, but there the, the, the characters you have all game are a little bit deeper. But again, if you want like a, like a one where you have multiple protagonists and the stories are actually deep, I would rather, I would highly suggest Octopath Traveler too. Like I think they do it a lot better. There's only eight characters and the stories go much deeper and it feels like there's a better reason that the party's traveling together. Like this is 120 heroes, but like some of them, you're like, why would you even travel with them? Like it doesn't make any sense. And then they don't comment on it. And again, like they're not like, Hey, I'm here to help. Like I'm here because we're helping each other. Like, it's just like, Oh, you join the party. And then you like, don't hear from them again. Mm. But like they're in your party. Like, yeah. So that is kind of like the downside. If you really are interested in this game though, I would suggest when Suikoden 1 and 2 HD comes out in August, because this is a spiritual successor to Suikoden, yeah. I think you should play Suikoden over this, because I think Suikoden's story is a lot better. Really? The combat-wise, okay. I think this has a better combat, but again, it's turn-based, so it's like, you can't, like, I don't think, like, the combat's good, but it's not like, oh my gosh, I have to play this because of the combat. Like, it's it's turn-based. Um, I would suggest Suikoden 2. Well, Suikoden 1 and 2. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, so I think I was very, I was very sincerely thinking about playing uh, Eud and Chronicles next after I finished Yakuza. It was in like my short list of games that I'm going to get to. But now that you said this, I'm going to go ahead and move it back to the back of the line. I think I'll play something else. Um, and yeah, maybe I will look to uh, getting into uh, Octopath Two instead at some point, or or tweak it in like you mentioned. So, but that is a bit disappointing because that was a game that I had my eye on for a long time. Um, but all right, so that's Uden Chronicles. Uh, Sean, what else are you playing? So I played through Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. It got released on Switch. This is one of my, like, I absolutely adore this game. It's one of my favorite games, like, ever. And um, I used to speed run this game. So I, like, know the, I know it, like, inside and out. I speed run this and the original Paper Mario 64. So, like, I, I got through this game, like, in, like, the blink of a second. And, oh, my God, it holds up so well. Like, it looks gorgeous on the Switch, like, they updated the graphics, and now it's it's only 30 FPS now. It's not 60 FPS, which was a little bit to get used to for me, especially being a speedrunner, because like you had to, you're so 
like the, the frame rate is so intricate because it's like oh you have to you have to time your uh, power bounces all the time um but this it, it it holds up so well the writing in this game is hilarious like um and the way they incorporate the, the various mario characters like from mario sunshine they have, they have, they have the piantas like the big guys oh do you know the piantas from mario they have them in there and like they're part of like the mob and it's like they work for don piantas who's like the godfather and it's so funny because, like, one of the o- in the opening game, like in the prologue, it's not really spoiling anything. Um, Paper Mario is not talking because he's just listening because he doesn't talk. But uh, this is your first partner's name it's a Goomba. It's named Goombella, and she's talking to you. And in the background, there are these two Pientas, like mob men, and they're beating the crap out of like this, like kind of like this, like he's like a guard and they're beating the crap out of him because he owes money to the Don because he bet on something and didn't pay up his bet. And they're just beating him up in the background and they're like, you owe the Don money. And I, I can I can picture it in my voice. And you have to, you end up doing like stuff for the Don. Like you, you like, you need a blimp ticket. So he's like, oh, I can get you a blimp ticket, but you got to do this for me. Oh, you want a train ticket? You got to go do this for me. And it's, it's, it's great. And the game holds up so well. I love just the story of Paper Mario and all the chapters and the combat's fantastic. It's turn-based combat, but it's so good. The partners are so memorable. Oh my gosh. I adore Vivian who you get in chapter four. And there was some controversy about the localization with her. And like, I don't care about that. Like, okay. It, it's more true to what they were originally saying. Like, I, I don't really care. It's a, it's a whole nonsense story, but she's awesome. The games is overall such a good experience. If you want good writing from a JRPG, you should play Paper Mario a thousand year door. Love it. Um, you have any, I know you don't have a switch, so you, you can't play it. I mean, no, oh. but when I finally get the Switch too, um, I'll probably play Paper Mario and Super Mario RPG and stuff. You know, I like RPGs, so yeah. that's stuff that's I, right story, up my alley. I think the, the story is phenomenal, and it, it's the writing is so funny. Oh my god! Just shout out to Vivian, shout out to Coops, shout out to Goombella. Those are my three favorite partners. Uh, there was a point though in Chapter Two when I was little, when I was playing this little. Uh, there's a Chapter Two partner. She's a little um. I don't know. I felt him. I felt weird. Like, I'm like, what if my mom comes in and like walks in and sees me with his partner out? <laughs> and I was like, if you look up just Paper Mario Thousand Year Door Chapter Two Partner, I don't want to spoil it. Her name's Flurry. And I was like, I used to freak out. Like, what if my mom walks in? Mom, I'm just playing a game. I'm sorry. It's pretty <laughs> funny. But cause I'm like eight, I'm like seven or eight years old at the time. And I was yeah. like, if you just look at the picture of her, you'll, you'll, you'll understand why. Um, but yeah, writing, fantastic. Bowser's, I love Bowser in these Mario RPG games. He's hilarious. <laughs> um, yeah. There's a, there's a whole tournament chapter too. Chapter three, the whole tournament arc. Oh, nice. That's really cool. Yep. Big tournament yeah. arc. All right. So I've been playing that. that. I, so I beat, I beat that. And then I played a really short visual novel called Venba. Uh, either of you ever heard of Venba? No. no. It, it came out last year. It's just a visual novel about um, like an, it's an Indian immigrant family. They moved to Toronto, Canada, and it's like a family. And the kids are kind of assimilating into like the Canadian lifestyle. But the mom wants to like keep their Indian heritage. Like, and the way she keeps it is through the cooking. So it's a visual novel with a cooking mini game in it too. So you can like cook meals and depending on how well you do on like, cooking the meals, like the, the path of the story can change. Very short game, like two to three hours. But I played through it a couple times because there's different endings. It's a really wholesome story about just like, you know, maintaining like, you know, your family values and staying true to who you are. And um, like, obviously, it's good to like assimilate into a new country, but you want to hold on to like what makes you you and what, you know, it's it, it's really good. I, I enjoyed it. If you like want like a heartwarming story and like a fun little cooking mini game, it's cool. It takes place in the 80s and it actually goes through like you you go through generations of the kids growing up and everything. It's fun. Okay. I'm actually surprised when you said it was like Canadian or whatever, because when you said a visual novel, I was immediately like, here we go. Weebery, you know, because oh, I, every, oh, I always think visual novel and weebs are like just tied together. I uh, mean, if you like visual novels, you like this game. I'll, I'll just say that. I do like visual novels a lot, though. So. All right. Fair enough. Hey, hey, I respect it. I'm not I'm not trying to hate. Um, it sounds cool. Um, so that's Venba. Yeah. Um, and that's, uh, so that was, uh, completes the games that you're playing, Sean. Are you, uh, satisfied yeah, on beat, those? Yeah, I beat all three. Yep. Awesome. Good stuff. All right, Hodge, let's go ahead and get to you. Uh, you're playing some games. What's going on? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, firstly, I'll talk just quickly about the new Fortnite season just came, uh, dropped last week. 
Uh, it's a post-apocalyptic one with the Fallout. Um, why can't I? Why am I blanking on the what the suit's called? Oh my god, power armor. Power armor. Power armor. Yeah, it's a, one of the skins in the new season. But it's overall, it's pretty fun. But they made a big push towards car combat this season, which sucks because that's really not what the game's about. Why? Yeah, what does that have to do with Fallout? It, it, well, yeah, because it's all it's I mean, it's post apocalyptic. So it's like Mad Max and kind of that kind of stuff as well. So they have the cars where you can add turrets or like special tires or a cow catcher to the like you can customize these cars and go around like shooting people with them. But it's like it's kind of turning into twisted metal. It's like that's not what Fortnite <laughs> is really about. And I'm afraid of it doing what they did in the original chapter, chapter one, season 10, where they added mech suits and everyone fucking hated it because mm. it's like, that's not what the game's about. Why would we have mech suits in this game? Like it's about you building up and shooting people, not powering through people in a goddamn Gundam. But uh, so it's, it's a little frustrating because if you don't have a car and you fight against people who have a car, you're screwed. Like you're just going to get destroyed. So you kind of have to have a car and it's, cha- I mean, it's, you know, respect to changing the meta of a game where it's not just getting stale in the same. Like, I mean, I still love hell divers, but it's kind of gotten samey because they haven't added anything new in a, in a while. So it's like, it's getting to the point where like, I have all the ship upgrades. I have all the, you know, whatnots to upgrade yourself and stratagems and shit. So it's like, I'm just kind of playing for fun at this point, which is fine. It's a fun game still, but it's just, it's not one where it's like every night got a hell dive. We've got everyone get on right now and hell dive. It's kind of like, yeah, let's play for a little bit because I want to shoot some bugs or some robots. But so but so I understand wanting to change up the game, but add it, this was a horrible mechanic that they decided to add because, yeah, like I said, if you're not in a car and you're fighting against someone who's in a car, you're basically screwed. There are weapons where you can take out cars better. And actually they added, I don't know. You, neither of you play it, but there was a there's a weapon called the boogie bomb, which is a grenade that makes you dance. And so they added it back to the game because if you chuck it at a car, they get out of the car and start dancing. So that's really the only defense against it now, which is fine. I guess, you know, they're trying to even it out because the first week it was bad. People were getting so pissed like I'm not in a car and I'm just getting destroyed. Like, I just want to play Fortnite, make this its own game mode or something. I don't want to have to do this. And so thankfully, they're starting to, you know, even it out a little bit where being in a car isn't or fighting someone who's in a car isn't a death sentence anymore, which is nice. But it's still it's not a mechanic I'm really enjoying. So I'm either hoping they remove it soon or just wait kind of for the next season, because if it's a season where they've added some mechanic people hate, that season usually doesn't last very long. So because there's they have like 10 weeks of challenges, but then some seasons that people are loving, they'll just extend it past. And they have basically like overtime challenges in a way, whereas it used to just be 10 weeks, move on, 10 weeks, move on. Uh, So if it's a season that people aren't enjoying, they're probably going to move on quick. But uh, at least they're trying to nerf it a little bit. But yeah, it's 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 still a fun game, obviously. And they're always changing, adding new things. But yeah, it's I think the car combat i mean unless they have like a twist of metal crossover that'd be pretty sweet if you get like a sweet tooth car or something that would be cool that'd be awesome but i mean did you did you up? get any skins did you get like an ella pernell skin or uh, <laughs> no they the only skin they've added from fallout is just the power armor well, i was surprised i'm sure in this in the shop eventually they will add like a vault suit where you could change your vault number on your back or something that'd be pretty cool but yeah vault 69 yeah, or you, they yeah. need like the the ghoul the ghoul armor ghoul outfit that'd be cool yeah, it'd be yeah. So it'd be cool if they had more. The uh, they every season now they have like a um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like just a skin from some IP that already exists. And this season it's like you're the, the special. Like they had Geralt one season. Uh, they had they've had uh, Attack on Titan for a season. Like they have just these bonus skins that's kind of outside the battle pass which you can earn. And this season is Magneto which is just random, but it's like post-apocalyptic Magneto and it's a cool skin, but yeah, I don't, it's kind of random, but yeah, overall still a fun game. It's new season. It's, it's kind of fun to do new challenges and whatnot, but yeah, these cars need to, I hope I can't wait for them to be removed. I was actually pissed when they added cars in the first, like, cause it used to just be like, it was all, all car was is if you're stuck in the storm, you used it to get out of the storm, but that was added months if not a year into the game's existence and i always hated adding cars because part of the game is you have to strategically avoid being in the storm and Mm -hmm. so by adding cars and 
all these ways to just travel across the map in two seconds. It's like, well, you took out the the strategy of fighting the storm. And yeah, so I'm, I've always been kind of against the super easy movement because it used to be you had to they had a thing called a bounce pad, which you, if you found it, you built up, you put the pad down and then use it to bounce in. But you had to use it. It took an inventory slot to do it. So you had to be like, who's going to carry the bounce pads right now? Because we need to get out of the storm. And so it's just, I don't know, adding adding more movement kind of ruins it. But yeah, it's all I really have to say. I won't have anything else to say about Fortnite until the next season. So because I don't want to <laughs> talk about Fortnite and Hell Divers every single week. But uh, the other game I'm playing is Hellblade 2, which uh, is getting a lot more hate than it deserves. I understand it is a slower game, but as I think I've said it on here before, I love walking Sims because if it tells a good story, I don't care. Like, obviously, I love my action games, which are fun. You know, Helldivers, Fortnite and, you know, Call of Duty or whatever. Like, I love playing games where you can just drop in and you just play it and then you're done. But this is game. I haven't beaten it yet. I think I've about an hour left. Um, but yeah, it's mostly you, you walk forward. Someone says something. You hit A to interact with. It's it's the gameplay. I understand is very bare bones. The fighting is actually better, I think, than the first game. The actual combat, what little of it you do, um, it's very cinematic. Like you're, it you would think it's a cutscene of the fights you're doing, but you're <laughs> playing it, and it's so it's really cool. The graphics are. So Dawning. Like I have never played a game that looks this good. It it used to be Order eighteen eighty six, Rise, Kenna Bridge of Spirits. Those games are beautiful games. Like you know, Rise is another one that I think is overhated. It's a it's a great game. I, I like Rise. Good game. It's the combat is very samey, but that story is awesome. It's still mm-hmm. a gorgeous game even today. And that was an Xbox One launch title. But it and so that's a it's a great game. But yeah, Hellblade 2, the graphics are amazing. But like I said, the one I hinted at earlier, this is part of the reason I got an OLED because I was like, I'm not playing it until I have an OLED because the original one, when it came out, is a PS4 game. And I played it just on my old 4K TV. And those black, like when it turns black, you see the shine from the TV when you're in a dark room. And you're like, oh, my God, this looks so washed out and shitty. So when it came to Xbox, I bought it again because I loved that game the first one and that's when i had an oled and i played i'm like ah much better (laughs) having those pure black uh tones in the game and so i've been playing it on the oled with this new one and it is stunning to look at the story is very intriguing of you know she losing her shit basically and (laughs) trying to survive while listening to the voices in her head and so i think it's overhated it's definitely not a an amazing game i'd say you know if I had to rate it, I'd probably put it at about a seven out of ten. It's not it's not amazing by any stretch, but it is a very good game. I think it's getting way too much hate because on like no I don't obviously we're not console warriors or anything, but I feel like anytime Xbox puts out something that's not perfect, people just shit on it. Like Starfield was overhated, Hellblade 2 is overhated, like just a lot of things that Infinite Halo Infinite's overhated, like even though they kind of botched the battle pass, but the game is still fun as hell. I don't care. And so I feel like people are kind of shitting on it because it's just fun to own Xbox right now. Like, it, I mean, deservedly so. They're fucking up a lot, but it's not Ninja Theory's fault. They're they're making good games. The puzzles, I think, are better than the first game because it's not every puzzle is just, hey, there's a freaking logo over here. Go find where it is in the world. It's like, what? Like, I hate like those that's, puzzles. In the yeah. First game. I, and I'd be stuck on them for, you know, half hour. Like, where do I line up? Like, <laughs> so I'm happy that the puzzles aren't just that in Hellblade 2. And yeah, it's it's a gorgeous game. It's worth your time. It's like a five, six hour game. Like if you want just a cool visual novel, not novel, but visual, you know, experience, it's a cinema. It is like people are saying it's a five hour playable movie. It's true. I don't care, but I like that. What 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 remains of Edith Finch is one of my favorite games of all time. It's a walking sim like I, I, I love Gone Home games like that. I love I love those games. So I'm happy that's what this is. And it's beautiful cinematic and I'm enjoying it. The the first I will understand. I heard a lot of people say, like, yeah, I dropped it after about a half hour. The first hour is pretty slow. You just kind of walk and then a cutscene happens. You walk and a cutscene happens. You don't fight until 45 minutes into the game. So I understand people aren't happy with that. But yeah, I, I, I'm really enjoying it. I'm looking forward to finishing it. I'll probably finish it later today or something. But yeah, I think I think it's worth it, especially if you have Game Pass. They're both on there. Playing them together is like an is a 10, 15 hour commitment. It's really not that bad. So I would play them if you haven't. Um, but yeah, they're 
yeah, just overhated. Pretty good. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, definitely OLED porn type game. No doubt. Yes. Um, yeah. It sounds like they really screwed up the intro, like the first hour. Like, uh, yeah, because you know, I only yeah, get one chance to make a first impression. And it sounds like they did a bad one. Yeah. Which really I know the like our back. friend, our friend, Chris, he dropped the game because he just couldn't make it past the first hour. I'm like, I understand if it's not catching you, but it does get it does get way better. And yeah. Yeah. And I do agree with you about the the Xbox. Hey, it's real. It's like people. uh because Xbox has been getting their ass beat so bad in the console space, um, people build up every game that comes out like it has to be a ten out of ten and save the brand. Mm-hmm. When really, it's it's just a game. Like it's it's yeah. just devs making a game. But people will build up every title like this game has to be the game that saves Xbox. And then when it comes out and it's a seven or an eight, people are like, "This game fucking sucks. This is a piece of yeah. shit. This is the worst yeah. game ever because it's not a ten out of ten that they wanted." And it's like, bro, like these devs are just making games like let them live, dude. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, it's not their job to save Xbox. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? They're just putting out a passion project. Yeah. But as we as we did talk about the other week is it with it having kind of I mean, it has an 81 on Metacritic. It's not like it's yeah, doing pretty poorly, good. but it does kind of give you the thing of they shut down high uh, tango after hi fi is Ninja Theory in danger. But they said, oh, no, they're they saying it not. Yeah, they said they greenlit their next game already, but. You can cancel and close the studio, so and yeah, we'll see enough. this time next year what happens. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Ho- hopefully, Ninja Theory is okay. Yeah, um, they're a very talented studio. The the game, there's so many parts of that game that straight up look real. Like it's not, yeah, not like the kind of thing of you know in the '90s where a polygon character is like, oh, he looks real. And it's like <laughs> and now you look back, it's like, oh, it looks like shit. But like it All right. genuinely looks like that. Yes, sir. All right. So that is what we are playing. Um, Let's go ahead and get into now the main topic of discussion for this video. And we have there was a showcase. We have the place. Well, not a showcase, not a showcase, showcase. not a showcase. We have the PlayStation state of play event happen to kick off the E3 Summer Games Fest uh, season. My, one of my favorite times of the year. I love when you have all these events. So PlayStation State of Play happened and we all watched it and we checked it out. So let's go ahead and go through what they showed and talk about it and see what we thought. Um, so the first game that they showed was Concord. Um, Concord is a new 5v5 online hero shooter from, uh, what is it, Firewatch, I think? Is, is yeah, that who's Firewatch. making this? Firewatch? No, um, no it's called Fi- no, isn't it? Firewalk. It's called Fire- Firewalk, yeah. Firewalk, excuse me. Apologies. Um, so yeah, that game. Yeah, that's their new live game, service. Another walking sim. Great game. <laughs> I love Firewatch. But yeah, this is Firewalk. So, what were you guys thinking about Concord? I would. I, I think it'd be awesome if it was like a single player story game. I, I would be all over this. I love that little intro. That little like uh, uh, CGI trailer they had with like the them in like kind of like the bar. They kind of chatted up, and then all of a sudden it's like, no, we, you're not leaving you're under arrest like give us what whatever you stole and i thought that'd be so cool that it's like a, it's almost like a it's like it could be like a heist game like that to yeah. me make it a story game i'd be all over it yeah like, like a guardians of the galaxy type thing. shooter yeah it, it reminded me of guardians of the galaxy a little bit like the like their banter and everything but then it mm-hmm. it had like i don't know something about it was a little bit more appealing to me than guardians of the galaxy maybe just because it's so much marvel fatigue um but if this was a story game, I'd be all over it. But it's five v five online shooter. I'm, I'm done. I can't do that. I'm, it's not my type of game. Um, but you know who? I hope it does well because I because I wish all the success for them. Um, it looks pretty cool. It looks like it's gonna play well from what we saw. Um, looks like they have a, the characters are a lot like all very varied. So that's kind of cool, but not for me. Make it a story game and I'll play it. Give give me a ten hour, twelve hour campaign and I'll, I'll be all over that. All right. So, Hodge, you are the indie and live service gaming maestro, my friend. This is right up your alley. This is your game. What did you think of Concord? I thought it looked like shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, the, the cutscene, the CGI was fine. It went on for way too long. It was like a five minute CGI trailer. I was like, all right, this needs to end. I am losing my mind. Um, but then they, the devs came out and like, all right, here's gameplay. I'm like, all right, here we go. I get to see how it looks and the gameplay. It doesn't look bad. I'm not, I'm not saying it looks bad by any means, but they showed five minutes of gameplay. And I was like, am I watching overwatch? 
Like it just looks like Overwatch and I it doesn't look like it adds anything special to the genre of hero shooter or whatever. It, but like, I mean, even with Sean, what Sean said is if it had a story, I might be a little more interested, but I don't. I, I have no desire just to step into a game that's just a 5v5. I played Overwatch for, I don't know, 30 hours or something when it came out. I, I really liked it, and but then I just kind of fell off of it. I got I got bored of it. I wasn't going to stick with it forever. Um, and so it, it looks like a game that, I mean, if it's a free-to-play game, I don't think it is because it says pre-order and get early access. Um, so I'm guessing it costs money. It's not a free game. But if it were a free Free to play shooter, I might give it a shot, but with what I saw and the fact that it's just a only multiplayer, no story, I think she, they said they're going to add vignettes or something each week or something. Or was that maybe a different game? I can't remember which. No, that, that is that game. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, each week they're going to have like a little vignette you can watch about a character. I'm like, that's cool, but I don't, I don't really care. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna dedicate my time to a five v five hero shooter. Um, it, like the, the Marvel banter was a little grating, but it wasn't the end of the world. I just, it, it, it just grated me that it went on for 10 minutes. The, that just 10 minutes of the state of play was dedicated to this game. And I know it's like the first party, like, Hey, the, we got to show what we've been working on or for first party. We have games, we swear. And it's, it, it, it landed flat for me. I, if people enjoy it, then I'm happy for them. But yeah, it's not a game I plan on touching. Okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, for me, I'm not really a big live service type guy anymore these days for the most part. This isn't something that appeals to me. Um, I thought it looked kind of shitty too, personally. I'm, I'm not trying to be rude or anything. Um, I'm happy for people who are into it, you know, people who like these types of games, like Overwatch fans and stuff. It had Overwatch vibes to me. Um, I'm happy for them. I hope they have a good time. But for me, I, I don't see me playing this at all. Maybe if it's free. Um, maybe I would try it, but I don't think it's free. I think it's a $70 game. I th- I'm pretty sure I saw somebody post like a screenshot of it in like a store and it was like 70 bucks or something. Yeah. Cause it, so, it did say pre-order and have like get the skin and a beta access or whatever. So you don't pre-order free games. <laughs> yeah. I guess you know, my guess is that they're going to make it free on PlayStation plus within six months. Probably because I think this I think this game is going to be a dud like Tony's gotten lucky with Hell Divers being as huge as it is. They obviously had no faith in that game because they just kind of dropped it and then everyone killed the servers because of so many people were trying to play it. And I this game's not going to have that same effect. People aren't going to be fighting to make certain to make space in the server like it's yeah. I, I see this kind of being like a bleeding edge, just a dud kind of a game, but. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Yeah, what we'll, do I know? we'll see. Um, you know, wish them the best. Uh, one thing I thought that was kind of weird, they showed gameplay in this. I don't know if it was just me. Maybe I'm just weird, but the gameplay looked fake. Like it didn't look right <laughs> to me. Like the, the character models. No, seriously. They, it, it looked weird, not fake. It looked, it just looked off. Like the character models seemed like they were like elevated in like a three, like you're looking at a 3d display, like a 3ds kind of screen or something like the characters <laughs> didn't look like they were actually in the map. They kind of looked like pulled out a little bit. It just looked kind of awkward. And maybe that's just me. I don't know. But regardless, that's not important, but I'm looking at it right now. And I think what it is is because everyone is like constantly jumping. And when you do certain moves, it goes third person. So it looks kind of like pre-recorded rather than gameplay. That's what kind of what I, I see from it. I don't know, but all right. So that was Concord. Um, next they went to God of war. Ragnarok is coming to PC. It's coming to PC on September 19th. Um, so that's exciting for PC master race, PC chads out there. They can finally play God of war Ragnarok. Um, that's not a game that I've personally played or have a whole lot of interest in. So I'll pass it to you, Sean, you, uh, what do you got to say about that? Oh, I love, um, I loved it. I, I love Ragnarok and the more people who can play it, the better. I like it better than 2018, to be honest. Um, I think the gameplay is awesome. I guess. I mean, I love, I love what they did. It's more of 2018. It's, it's more of what mm-hmm. we liked in 2018. And I, I liked the story better and I loved the evolution of Atreus. Uh, and the first game Atreus kind of annoyed me. Um, <laughs> but in this game, he was awesome. And it, and I really liked the performance of Odin in the game. Oh my God. Odin was awesome in the game. 
Uh, Thor was funny in the game. I thought Thor was hilarious in the game. Just a drunk old man. Um, but the more people who can play it, the better. And yeah, I I, I have nothing but high expectations. I think it's going to look gorgeous on PC as well. Oh, yeah. But yeah. For sure. Yeah, what about you, Hodge? Unlocked frame rates as well for PC. So it's, it's not going to be stuck to 30 or 60 or whatever. You can have whatever your computer can perform. Um, but I, I like 2018 better than Valhalla. I didn't like, or Ragnarok, sorry. I didn't like the Atreus parts. I not his, it's not a story. It's, I didn't like playing as Atreus. I just, his combat just wasn't as fun to me. Um, and, but it's, but it is still an amazing game and it's definitely worth people's time. Uh, I like, yeah, the story, I would say, I mean, cause it, it just continues on from 2018. Like you said, it's the same gameplay style. It's just a continuation, which I, I like a lot. I remember that people tried using that as like an own, oh, they're the same boat animation. It's like, who cares? <laughs> like it's, it's like, if you never played a sequel before, that's what sequels yeah, do. Yeah, do yeah. Were you alive during the PS2 era? Yeah. That's so dumb. Yeah. That's so dumb. Why would you design a new boat animation? Exactly. Like, yeah, exactly. It already works. You already was, have one. Yeah. It was just yeah. complaining for the sake of complaining, but yeah, it's, it, it is a fantastic game. Uh, yeah. 2018 is, is I like it more, but Val, uh, Ragnarok is definitely worth playing. It adds a lot of cool stuff. It adds a lot of characters. Like you said, Odin and Thor are awesome. Uh, Cause Odin is like that very good villain where it's like, you kind of get where he's coming from. But he's still yeah. evil, like thing, and so it plays so well, and yeah, it's definitely worth playing. Uh, and so yeah, I'm happy for PC players that they get to do it. I, I liked your joke though, Midnight, uh, that you did, where he's like, "I'm just gonna start telling people, yeah, I'll play it when it comes to PC <laughs> <laughs> for, for uh, PlayStation games." <laughs> yeah, I'm glad and, though. No, but there, th- some of the tw- this, I like some of the twists in the story. I didn't see coming either. Oh, which is I, really cool. Yeah, some like I don't even uh, like. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I don't you know even like mentioning about. it yeah. because it's not like a twist yeah. you saw coming. It was just a twist that yeah. happened, and you're like, wait, what? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, I don't like spoiling yeah. even like I don't, yeah, don't even spoil need- it. Yeah, well, I'm not going to spoil it. I don't even. I don't even like. Over there, guy. Yeah, Relax. I'm just saying, like, when I talk about this game to people, I don't even say that there is a twist because then you're yeah. Wait, that for is it a spoiler happen. in and of itself. Because yeah. then you start thinking like you're expecting a twist, and you're like, oh, what's it going to be? It kind of exactly. takes away from the impact that that the raw first watch happens. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't know if it's. Uh, I don't know. No, it's yeah, fine. I'm not. It's I'm not fine. saying I'm not we should. I'm not saying we shouldn't have. I'm just saying that's. I don't tell people that because I just want them to be like, I want them because no one told me that before I played it. So when it happened, I was like, what the fuck <laughs> like so I, I just that's kind of how i am with it but yeah no i'm excited pc players if you haven't played it definitely play uh ragnarok it's 20 then 2018 yes, has to be on pc right it yeah is. 2018 was one of the first was one of the okay first ones. that's what i thought yeah. i just i just didn't want to be like yeah play both of those if the first one wasn't on pc but yeah yes sir so for ragnarok for me i've mentioned this before but i'll just i'll say it again so i actually do own this game i bought it day one when it came to playstation 5 like i have the game um, but i never played it um and here's the reason why i never played it because god of war 2018 um i liked that game i thought it was a good game but there was two things that i really didn't like about the game um i felt like it started started to drag towards the end at the end i really wanted the game to end i was like well this game please end like i'm so sick of climbing this mountain and doing all this dumb shit i felt like it had really long linear story segments that just dragged on in the first game and i was sick of the puzzles i didn't like the puzzles i'm not a puzzle guy i said that with hellblade too i don't like puzzles um so when I got Ragnarok, everybody told me that there's way more puzzles and that the game's about 10 hours longer than the first one. And I was like, okay, so the two things that I didn't like are now ramped up in this one. And I was like, ah, I'm not going to play this. So I haven't even played it yet, but it is on my list. I do plan on playing it. I need to get to it eventually. Um, yeah, I will say about the story length, I feel like it stays as long as it needs to. I don't know, but then again, I didn't think that about the first one. I didn't think it was too long. I loved the first one. I thought it was like there. I mean, there's a moment in the first one that gave me chills. Like I had goosebumps that anyone who's played like uh, I've told people, I'm like, you have to play at least the original God of War before you play 2018 or else that moment will not be as impactful as. Oh, are you talking about the scene when Bucky came down and killed Loki? 
Yes, that one. In the first game? Yes, that was powerful. Yeah, that one. Emotional. It was, a, it was a, yeah. the power of the God Beaver, yep. No, but <laughs> there's there's a moment in that game where it kind of calls back to the original games, and that moment is unbelievably impactful if you've played the original. It's still a great moment if you haven't, I'm sure. But after I had I played all three leading up to 2018's launch when it came first came out, and so that moment hit me like a fucking brick shit house. Like that was, yeah, that was a a, a great moment. But yeah, PC players play it. It's great. Yeah, PC Master Race stays winning. I'm happy. I'm happy that these games are coming to PC. I think it's a great thing. More people get to play great games. Yeah. Ghost of Tsushima, by the way, sidebar is not. Uh, at this show but is the one of the best games ever made and is on pc now so if you've not played ghost of tsushima out there for some reason guys and you have a pc pick up ghost of tsushima and play it because that game is fucking amazing my favorite playstation exclusive of all time That's so i'm same. happy that more people get to play these games it's just great um and yeah like you said Hodge, like i like i i made the joke because people make the joke about like oh i'll just play the xbox game when it comes to playstation mm-hmm. and i was like well now that if playstation games are coming to pc i can i'll just wait and play it on pc you know mm-hmm. <laughs> but better graphics but no it, everybody's yeah. winning though when more people get to play more games every that's a win yeah um Let's go ahead and move on to the next game. The next game was Dynasty Warriors Origins coming out in 2025. Um, Sean, do you have any uh, any history with Dynasty Warriors? Any interest on this? No, my only history with Dynasty Warriors is I took a class in college um, that this kid, it was a history of like China. And I remember one time the professor, before the professor got there, this kid goes, yeah, my only history with China is I just I write all my papers based off Dynasty Warriors. I played them all, <laughs> and I haven't got. I've, and he got like all nineties, and I was like, "Oh, that's awesome!" But yeah, I have no interest in Musou games. They have no appeal to me. The only one I ever played was Hyrule Warriors back on Wii U, and I I, I didn't really enjoy it, so I didn't get the what Switch about, game. But didn't they do a Persona one, or am I am I tripping? Yeah, they did. Yeah. I did no interest in it. I have no interest in a Musou game. I don't either. Yeah. I don't either. Hodge, is this doing anything for you? Probably not. I think Hodge is pre-ordering this right now. Oh, this yeah, he's, one, he's getting no, it. This, Day one. This one, it doesn't appeal to me. I actually, uh, back on PS2, I used to play the Dynasty War games with my friends all the time because you could play them co-op, so it'd be fun just to fight armies together. And so they were fun, but it's never been a series that I'm just like, like because I think I don't think I actually owned them. I think my friend owned them, and I'd play them at his house. Um, so there were games that were fun, but it was never a series that I was like, Oh, a new dynasty wars. Hell yeah. Gotta play it. It was just whatever one we had on PlayStation two was the one we played and it was fun. But <laughs> so I, the, I, it did nothing for me, but it just kind of brought me back to memory of, I remember when I used to like dynasty warriors. <laughs> but, yeah. I don't think I've ever played one. Um, it's very, it's a very niche series, but it does have its, uh, dedicated hardcore fan base. So mm-hmm. I'm happy for them. Uh, it looks cool for what it is. You know, if you're into those types of games, there you go. Um, the I, next game. Um, oh, go ahead. Before like dynasty before they, I didn't even know what dynasty warriors was until Hyrule warriors came out. Then I figured out what a Musou was <laughs> I'm like, Oh, that's a Musou game. That's fine. All right. All right. I did not know that. Um, the next game they showed was infinity Nikki. Um, I don't even remember this one from the show at all. Um, I got nothing to say about this. What was this game? Was this doing anything? You for you? Is, uh, it's kind of like the dress up platformer game. With oh, the God. The there's Poke- like action combat. Pokemon <laughs> Snap for pedophiles. Yeah. That one. Oh, I'm, I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm so into this game. Oh, oh no. No. Do you guys know what Infinity Nikki is? Oh, Do you even no. know what it is? No, it looks is that pretty- the waifu dress up game? Yeah, it's like a dress up game. You take pictures, but this is like an action platformer. Hodge, I'm surprised you wouldn't be into this. This is like an the the way they explain it's like an action platformer adventure game where you're platforming. I didn't get that vibe at all from this trailer. I thought I was going to be put on a watch list just from watching the trailer. (laughs) No, it's there's like there's an actual it's like action platformer adventure. There's bosses at the end of each stage. I'm like pretty hyped for this game. I uh. Now that you mentioned it and you reminded me of what game it even was, because I completely wrote that off as soon as I saw that you're dressing up waifus. Uh, I was like, what is this weeaboo trash? But now that you mention it, though, I do remember seeing some uh, platform looking elements in it. Like, I think yeah. they were like jumping from like. Yeah, I'm looking at it. It's another. very it's very I don't want to say it's very strong in the platforming section. It looks like you just kind of jump over some stuff occasionally, but 
But there, yeah, there's action adventure aspects. There's a boss at the end of each stage, depending on what outfit you put on, depends on like the, the powers you have. And it ends on like a very ominous note with like this like enemy coming out of nowhere. I don't know. I'm a little interested in this game. I'll, I'll probably I'll probably play it. Okay. Yeah, is this like a sequel that. or a developer that you're it's, familiar it's, with? On? It's a tenth. It's the tenth anniversary of Nikki. Of what's what's it called? what's the game even called? Infinity Nikki. It's I, I did some research. It's like the tenth anniversary. They had a bunch of dress up games, but this is the first like actual action platformer. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm interested. All right, we'll right see. on. So, uh, look forward to that. Games over plastic. Uh, we're gonna have spoiler the cast. review. The review. Spoiler yeah, the spoiler cast, cast featuring Infinity Sean Nikki. Mason. Yep, Infinity Nikki spoiler cast. You got it. All right, coming soon. Um, all right, I think we're good with that one. That's good. I'm happy yeah. for you, Sean. Um, next, we had the Ballad of Antara, um, which is another one that I don't remember. I should have pulled up the damn videos. Dude, um, do you guys remember this one? What was this? Yes, this game was like the co-op game where like there was like a guy carrying someone on their back, like a girl on their back, and he went into like a portal thing, and then all of a sudden like the spirits kind of split. Kind of reminded me like Avatar when you go into like the spirit realm and avatar but yeah, yeah, i was i thought this game looked really cool like it was like an advent it was like almost like an adventure game but then i found out it was free to play oh mm. is it this is like the souls yeah. like game i saw right yeah people were kind of saying I, a lot of people were calling it we have elden ring at home um kind of thing but yeah i i it looks like a decent you know kind of combat game but yeah it, it, it didn't do much for me i didn't look like my type of game Okay. Um, all right. Is everyone satisfied on Ballad of Antara? Um, I saw yeah. it. I mean, it's it looked like kind of like a Souls like game. It wasn't doing much for me. Um, it did just look because like we're getting a lot of Souls like games now that are kind of it's like the Elden Ring effect is finally starting to get far enough into development where we're actually seeing these games now. Because there was another one later in the show that also had like Elden Ring vibes, but that one looked cooler. I thought. Um, oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So we'll get to that. Um, and then we had Skydance Behemoth is a VR game. Uh, was this this was like a Skyrim vibes kind of VR game, um, which actually looked really cool. Like, I don't have a PSVR to um, I'm not going to get one. I've never played VR at all, um, so I, I'm really not familiar. But I thought this game looked pretty cool for a VR title. It looked very well done. High budget Skyrim vibes. So, you know, I like that. Um, what did you guys think of that one? I couldn't get over the fact right when it starts up and it shows the guy with his hands and he's holding the sword. He was holding it so awkwardly and I couldn't get over that. And I'm like, this, no, the animation was so weird with the sword. He was holding it like this. It was like, like he was holding like this. The sword was like this. And I'm like, why are you holding the sword like that? Because so I couldn't get over that. I'm not that a, that's how they're, what they have to show the sword. It's like the Wiimote. It's like the, um, I, uh, <laughs> I've never played VR, um, probably never will. My dad has a VR. He likes his PSVR too, but I've never played it. Um, but yeah, this is not for me. All right. Hodge, anything? Yeah, I, um, it look yeah, it looks really cool, but yeah, I don't have a PSVR too. Cause I, th I might've said it on here or not. I'm not sure, but I was gonna get a PSVR two after my ex's cats chewed through my PSVR wire. But when it turned out that the two wasn't backwards compatible and I lost my entire library, I was like, well, I don't, I don't really care. Cause it was a $550 fucking headset and nothing came out with it. I know our friend John will disagree with that, but um yeah it's i just it i just don't care about psvr anymore i have an oculus uh uh quest and it's uh or a meta quest or whatever the hell they're called now uh and it's really cool i play beat saber on all the time super hot like vrs are really cool but i get motion sickness so i can't do games where you actually have to move like I, it has to be a game where you're standing still or you can teleport to the next spot because i can't do the motion thing and sadly, this game looks like it's one you have to walk around and stuff. So I know I wouldn't be able to play it because I can't do the, the skip. I know most games, they don't show it in the trailer, but they usually have the motion sickness mode where it does teleport you instead of walking you. So maybe I could. But yeah, I'm not buying a PSVR 2 for $550. That was a crazy price point that they gave for that system. And they basically put it out for dead. I was actually surprised they even had VR games at this showcase because this seems like they haven't put any support into that thing so i just 
the the meta quest is just a better headset it's cheaper it's you don't need to have it plugged in anything obviously the psvr is more power because you plug it directly into your playstation but uh yeah it's just there's i'm never unless it's on sale for, like near the end of its life cycle if they're on sale for 200 bucks and it has a full library maybe i will you know buy one at that point just to have fun with it but because VR is really cool. I do like once you've played it, you when, like watching it on TV doesn't do any justice because you don't get that depth of field. It's mm. flat screen. But when you're in the VR headset, you do feel like you're kind of in a room or like in the environment. It is really cool. I do love VR, but yeah, I'm not I'm not going to get a VR two. And so these games, I'll I'll probably never touch it. <laughs> OK. Speaking of VR, the next game was Alien Rogue Incursion coming holiday 2024. I'll keep this one short and sweet. Again, I I don't have VR, so I'm probably not going to check that one out either. But cool for Alien fans and horror fans, I guess, if it's a horror type game. Anything you guys got to say about that one? Um, I've never actually seen any of the Alien movies, (sighs) but it looks so cool. Like, I thought I'm not a VR guy like, like you guys. Like, I've never played VR, but I think it would be pretty cool to um like run around that world in vr and like kind of like be like oh my god like what's gonna happen you all of a sudden you turn the corner and aliens like in front of your face like oh my god what's happening yeah the uh Uh i so when uh when the original when i got the original psvr they had like demo discs basically you could play different demo parts of and there was one it was just called like kitchen or something like that so i played it and what it turned out to be was a demo for resident evil 7 in vr and so what you are is when it starts up, you have to keep the controllers next to each other like this because your hands are bound while you're sitting in a chair. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. And so you have to do that because you're bound in a chair. And then this fucking demon lady comes up and sticks a knife in your face. I was shitting my pants. So I just turned it <laughs> off. I'm like, I'm not doing this. So I know that this game would do that for me. Just scare the shit. Out. Like I can play horror games all day long. I love a lot of horror games, uh, but horror VR that's where I draw the line. I, yeah. I know I would just be crapping my pants the entire, like if there, was, I know, I think pretty sure they made Fri- five night at Freddy's a VR game. Uh, I, like I said, I played that demo for RE seven and then this, I would, I couldn't, I guarantee I'd be too chicken shit to play this game, but it does actually look pretty cool. Like if for people who are into that, like horror VR, this game does actually look really freaking intense and cool, but yeah, I, I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> Okay, so there you have it. That was the PSVR 2 section of the show. Yeah. Um, next, they had Marvel Rivals, uh, which has a beta coming July of 2024. Um, so this game, it was like uh, like a Marvel skin on Overwatch, basically. Another Overwatch so, game. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the Marvel Bros, I know Lord Cognito would be thrilled about that one. Um, on all the Marvel Bros out there. What did you guys think? Was uh, Marvel Rivals doing anything for you? I thought yeah. it looked pretty cool like the art style but yeah, yeah not a hero really guy good, not a hero guy i thought it was interesting that you had like they showcased spider-man a little bit but then when they didn't really show him in the gameplay part like in the gameplay part they really didn't show spider-man that much they had him they in, just like, showed the, him swing once yeah yeah they showed him swing once but like they showed venom a lot uh the way i do like the art style but some of the heroes i couldn't recognize because they're so like different than how they're normally portrayed. Mm-hmm. I mean, I recognized everyone, but yeah, I, I get you because they're not the MCU. They're more comic book looking. Um, but that fucking waifu Galactus just threw me. I was like, I can't do it. They've made waifu Galactus. I don't want just give me planet eater demon fucking Galactus. I don't need this weird cutesy waifu version. Uh, but the yeah, it, it was just another overwatch clone. And it, so it didn't really do much for me. I, I mean, you know, it's 10 years ago, I might have been, you know, been like this looks amazing because I was super into Marvel. I, I've been loved Marvel since I was a kid, Marvel and DC. But after Endgame, I've just been so burnt out on Marvel that it just does nothing for me anymore. I can't I can't pretend to be excited about anything Marvel related anymore, except for like Deadpool 2, which looks pretty good. But that's, you know, grandfathered in from previous movies. Um but yeah, it, it looks, I mean, the gameplay, I'm sure it looks good, but yeah, it does really nothing for me. So you didn't like Waifu Galactus? 
Um, <laughs> I, I looked it up. I didn't know what you were talking about, so I just Googled it. And I guess people are saying that's actually Galacta, Galactus' daughter. Well, you, his, get the, that's you, know, you, daughter. You, you get the Spanish, Galacta. Ends in the A, you know, it's feminine, you know. Yeah, and apparently she's from the comics, so it is canon. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I it's that's canon. Hold on, let me you see. Just when, up. when did she get added to the comics? I gotta I look. Know. I don't even know if she is, but there is a cover of, of Marvel thing here that says Galacta, it's daughter canon. of Galactus. Let's um, see. I couldn't first care. appearance. I could, While he's care looking that up, two thousand and nine was her first appearance. So yeah, it was after the MCU was born. Because here's my conspiracy theory: there's a lot of these fucking characters in Marvel now that they're like people say, "Well, they're from the comics." I'm like, okay, they were added to a comic five years ago so you could add them to the MCU and so you could tell people they're from the comics because that's their way of keeping it accurate of, of, of this, their stupid little weak defense of telling people who say, why are you using this version of this character instead of the classic version? Well, it was from the comics too. Okay, it's from a shitty comic no one read. Give us Steve Rogers, Captain America, not Falcon, Captain America. Give us fucking... Well, Richard Ryder Nova, not Sam Alexander Nova. Give us the OGs, not these stupid remakes that you made. Or Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel was Car- Carol Danvers, not fucking Kamala Khan. Anyway. It, wasn't this right. kind of a similar response to when Guardians of the Galaxy came out? Everyone was like, who are these I characters? Know. I don't remember. Yeah, but I mean, they were an original. I mean, the the team, I think, was different when it launched. They uh, the Oh my God, what's his name? The Michael Rooker character with the arrow. He was an original Guardians of the Galaxy, I believe, not a, a scoundrel or whatever the hell his name was in that or whatever they were called in that. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's iterations and there's some characters where the iteration, the second iteration is better. But like people are trying to act like Miles Morales has always been Spider-Man. It's like, no, it was Peter Parker. Miles Morales didn't come around until 15 years ago. Like Mar- <laughs> uh, fucking Peter Parker's existed since the 60s. No one's gonna, he's never going to be replaced. But I, I, that's a complete different rant for another day. But yeah, the, yeah. Fucking, tell us how you really feel. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you how I feel. Arguments. <laughs> I'll tell you how I feel. I'm sick of Marvel. Um, I will not be playing Marvel Rivals because I could care less. Marvel sucks. Couldn't care Marvel's less. overrated. I'm sick of Disney shoving this shit down our throats. All right, we don't need the MCU season 36 where they've got 12, 12 different shows and five movies. Make sure you go check them out, guys. Screw that, all right? Quit trying to take my money by putting out shovelware, all right? And I don't like live service games that much either. I don't play Overwatch, so I'm not going to play this. But shout out to Marvel Rivals. If you are one of the Marvel bros or if you like Overwatch, uh, you might enjoy this. It might be fun, and I'm happy for you. Um, but it's not for me. This is not a midnight game, and, and that's fine. You know, different games for different people. Nothing wrong with that. Um, so let's move on here. We had next. We had the where where wins meet. Um, Sean, what was this one doing for you? Anything? I thought it looked really cool. The only thing I'm a little concerned about is they only showed like boss combat. Like there was only boss fights. And I'm wondering, is this just like a boss fight rush mode? Like where you just, you go in and it's like they, they throw you in an arena and it's like you're fighting this boss. And maybe you have like a like a cinematic trailer before, like a little backstory of it. But is there no like open world, not, not even open world, but like no like, I don't know, pathway to the boss where you're fighting like smaller enemies or you're platforming or going on an adventure? I'm really curious about this one. This did look good. The combat looked awesome and it looks really cool. But I'm, that's my one thing I'm like, like wondering about and i i'm i'm assuming since we got no date that th- this is probably a later 2025 maybe early 2026 game um so obviously we'll have more to see later but that was the one thing that stood out to me was like why are they only showing these boss fights but th- they look pretty cool some of the bosses yeah were like huge compared to the player so it did feel it did look very souls like in the boss fights yeah i i affectionately dubbed this one china uh, China was China ring. It looked like China ring to me, like Chinese Elden ring kind of vibes. Um, I thought it looked pretty cool though. I like the art style. I like the colors. They got like, they kind of had a ghost of Tsushima, like uh, kind of look to it. They got the, the red flowers everywhere on the rocks and stuff. So it looked all right. Um, I might check that one out. You never know, depending on what platforms it comes to and how the reviews do um, might be something I check out. I thought it looked better than the other one that we talked about earlier. Um, but yeah, we need, definitely need to see more because all we saw was boss fights, like you said, Sean. Um, Hodge, was this doing anything for you? Any thoughts on where wins meet? 
Um, no, it was just another Souls like I've, I've never been a big Souls like kind of guy, uh, except for like Fallen Order. I, I really liked that, which was Soulsy ish. But uh, yeah, it's never been a gameplay style that I've ever really cared about. So I mean, it looks cool, and if people like it, cool. But yeah, it doesn't really do. Did much you play Elden Ring? No, because oh I knew I'd so just get my best ass. Games ever. I'm sure it is, but I didn't feel like hating my life it's, it's, for it's 50 not that hours. Hard. You can't judge anyone for not playing some of the greatest games ever. You just played Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> I mean, that's that's fair. That's fair enough. All right. Watch has, Watch has about bit. 20 years to play Elden Ring. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. You got like 25 more years based on my, uh, my scale there. All right, fair enough. All right, Sean, you win. Uh, let's keep it moving here. The next we had a completely pointless game, in my opinion. Uh, for some reason, God knows why, um, they are remaking or remastering Until Dawn. So Until Dawn is coming to PS5 and PC in fall of 2024. There's absolutely zero reason for this game to exist because the game is only like eight years old and already plays on PS4, uh, which means it plays on PS5 and it looks good already. So What's this doing for you guys? You excited about replaying Until Dawn on PS5? Uh, I don't like these tiny, kind of games. I'm not, not really big into it. But I think the biggest reason is I think they they want to put it on PC. And I think it's, I honestly, I think it's just an excuse that we're making it on PC. So why don't we just put it on PS5? Yeah. The other thing is, aren't they making a movie for this? I, th- I think, yeah. Yeah, um, so they're probably wanting to just generate hype again. But I actually really liked this game. It, uh, mm-hmm. it it's like a heavy rain kind of thing where your all your decisions actually matter. And oh, some shit and <laughs> didn't change in heavy rain depending on don't matter your choices. But um, it was a very cool thing. Like I, I don't even know. I don't know if I think it's a spoiler, but basically you can pick whether or you can play to have everyone survive or no one survive. Like it's a really cool thing where. I, th- I think I had half of them survive cool. when I played through it. Uh, and I've, I've always, I've wanted to play the quarry. I think it's on game pass now, so I will play that eventually, but you know, I heard it's worse. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this game, I, but this, yeah, this remaster, it's very last of us remastered or Alan Wake remastered where they updated like the lighting, but the graphics are still kind of shit compared to, I mean, like they were good at the time, but, they didn't up them to be current like this could have looked beautiful, but it just looks like the same shitty graphics, but with better lighting like it didn't. They didn't seem to update much. And when it's an eight year old game, you think you'd want to touch up like like going from Alan Wake remastered to Alan Wake 2. It's a completely different look because Alan Wake remastered as much as I love Alan Wake, that remaster is barely a remaster it's like just kind of a re-release like they just copy paste and save like is kind of what they did with it and that's kind of how i feel with this game it doesn't really look any better um but i'm happy it's coming to ps5 for those who want it it's coming to pc for anyone else to enjoy it it's a it's a smart idea to bring it current but yeah they're acting like it was like this amazing remaster and it's like you just kind of ported it it's not really a remaster so uh, I mean, th- granted, it's not called Until Dawn Remaster. It's just called Until Dawn, and it's for PS5 yeah. and PC. So, I mean, I guess that's m- on myself to assume that about it. But, yeah, I don't know. It it didn't didn't do much for me. I enjoyed the game, so I was happy to see it, and I might actually replay it because I it is a, it is a game style that I do enjoy. So, um, but yeah, it it's it felt pointless being at this show. Yeah. Um, Until Dawn was a great game. Um, I actually I didn't play it, but I watched it. I was oh, yeah. I was really I was really invested in like a YouTube playthrough or, or Twitch or something that someone was playing. I watched the whole game um, and it was really good and really entertaining story. Um, mm-hmm. I went, Does that game have co-op? Is it kind of like a uh, As oh. Dust Falls type thing where you can have two people making choices? That would be fun. I don't think so. That would be cool, though. If they I added that so. in the remake, that'd be cool. Because wouldn't it be cool playing with a friend and you guys make the choices together? And I think you, I think they did have an option for like that. I think they did. Yeah, because I loved that, that game As Dust Falls where you played with the friends and you made choices and stuff. That's one of my favorite like experiences in the I last couple play years. That one. Oh, dude, it's so fun. Co-op. Um, all right, let's keep it moving here. The next game was Path of Exile 2. Early access, late 2024. This is a action RPG kind of Diablo-like game. Uh, apparently, Path of Exile is very popular. It's like a more hardcore Diablo 
Uh, it's supposed to be really good. A lot of people like it more than Diablo, uh, but it's more hardcore, more difficult, I think. Um, what did you guys think? Anything that, about Path of Exile 2 that you liked or you think you'll play? Uh, I've heard really good things about Path of Exile 1, um, but like I've never played Diablo. So if I was going to jump into one of these games, I think I'd probably start with Diablo just because, again, it's not known as this seems more of, like intense and hardcore. If I like Diablo, maybe jump over to this. But um, I know some one of my buddies, Scott, the one um, he texted me right away when he saw this and was like, oh, my gosh, like I cannot wait for this because he's a huge Path of Exile guy. So he's he's already he's going to be jumping right into it. He's he's he can't wait for the early access. Yeah, Diablo is more casual, I think, uh, easier to get yeah. into. Um, I, I think that I think if, if I yeah, if I ever do try these games, I'd start with Diablo and then make my yeah. way to Path of Exile. Me too. Me too. I'm going to play Diablo 4 at some point. Um, I started it for a second and then dropped it because there was a patch coming. So I was like, I'll just wait. Um, Hodge, anything for Path of Exile 2? No, these games never really appealed to me. Uh, my brother keeps trying to get me to play Diablo with him, and I'm just holding out and saying no. But uh, That was one thing. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you're good. That was one thing about uh, Path of Exile 2 that I thought was really cool is that they added couch co-op. Um, yeah, so I was like, you can have two controllers and you guys can play together. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say that That that's kind of the one thing that would sell me on this is it's even if it's not like the type of game I my own, if someone wanted to play couch co-op with it, then I could I could take the time to do that. That seems like it would be pretty fun. But yeah, it uh, it doesn't really do much for me. But yeah, it's. For people who like these games, you know, more power to them. All right, let's keep it moving. Next we had, this is a big game here. This is a big game, but from we already knew this game was going to be here um, because they had a special event right afterwards. So everyone knew that this was coming. It wasn't really a surprise. And I think if it was a surprise, it would have hit harder and would have been more exciting. But can't take away from the fact that this is a big title that a lot of people are interested in. We have Silent Hill 2 coming October 8th. 2024 from bloober team everyone's favorite horror developer um <laughs> for me i am not a horror fan midnight is not a horror guy so i've never played the original silent hill i never played uh silent hill 2 if it even existed the original i don't know um i'm just not a horror guy so i'm not going to be playing this um but i know that it is a big franchise that people are excited about so i'm happy for them um hodge what is uh, silent hill 2 doing anything for you you gonna play this no, this dude looks like Leon Kennedy from the dollar store. It's just <laughs> the fucking five below. Yeah, five below Leon Kennedy. I, I joked. I'm like, that's Frank Kennedy, his weird cousin. Um, but it's like it's Silent Hill. It looks like such a cool world that I would love to get into. Like, but Bluebird just misses. They're not good. Like I wanted to love that one game that was exclusive to Xbox for a while. The medium, me the medium. Yeah. But I played like an hour and a half of it. I'm like, this game fucking sucks. And I stopped playing it. And so it's like, I wish Bluebird would have get their shit together. And such a legendary IP of like of Silent Hill. You'd think they would have gotten some legendary team to work on it. But instead it's just Bluebird who just farts out these mediocre games and yeah, like that just makes me look at I'm like the graphics just don't seem that good. The gameplay looks choppy. I just it doesn't I would love to get into this game, but this this ain't doing it for me. <laughs> what about you, Sean? Never played Silent Hill like ever. I really don't have any interest in it. This game didn't look good at all. I think it looked it looked like a PS2 game. Yeah. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> Which is ironic cuz it is a PS2 game. Maybe PS3. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it didn't look great. I saw, uh, some, I saw a funny shot going around of the female main character or whatever, um, uh, where it looked like she put on some pounds, looked like she was hitting McDonald's quite a bit, uh, in the, in the remake. The Ugo fighter. It's all right though. Um, so, you know, Silent Hill two, there you go. Big game, big name. Hopefully it's good. We'll see. Um, but I will not be there. Um, cause I'm just, I don't, you know, life is, life is horrible enough. I don't need to be scared while I'm playing games too. You know what I mean? I have to go to work. Every week. That's enough horror for me when that alarm hits. <laughs> All right. So next game is another another big game that isn't for isn't a midnight game that I don't care about at all. But Monster Hunter Wilds was out. Monster Hunter is very popular, especially in Japan and stuff really big over there. Um, 
you know, this game has a big following base. I've never played any of them. I've never cared. They've been on Game Pass and I still didn't care. But it looks cool uh, for people who like that. Monster Hunter Wilds coming in 2025. Uh, Sean, are you a Monster Hunter guy? Is this something you're into? I've never played one, but this one, I'm actually really interested now. After playing Grand Blue Fantasy, which is a lot of people compared to like a Monster Hunter game, I'm really interested because I, I think I could really get into this. I like the design of the characters. It looked very JRPG-ish, the character design. It looked like almost like what I would imagine one of those old 16-bit JRPGs I loved as a kid would look like in like full 3D. So I'm, I'm excited to give it a try. Um, but I heard like a lot of the Monster Hunter fans were saying, no, this, this doesn't look as good as, um, what was the last one called? Monster Hunter World? The last one it did really well. World, maybe? World, maybe. I don't know. Whatever the last one was that everyone like loved, people were like, oh, it's not going to be like that because it looks different. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I'm excited. I'm interested. Yeah, I am actually going to try to play a Monster Hunter game before this one comes out. And I think I will. If I enjoy it, I'm definitely going to get this. Right on. Uh, Hodge, Man. how about you? Anything? No, I've I said this in our Discord, and I guess people disagree with me. I've never seen the appeal of Monster Hunter. It, they just don't look fun to me. I don't know. If, I, I mean, it has a huge following, and they sell like crazy, so obviously someone likes them. But, yeah, these games have never done anything for me. I have no interest in it, and, yeah, yeah. I, I have really nothing else to say, but I don't, I don't care about Monster World or Hunter, Monster Hunter. Yeah, I, I could care less as well. So, but I'm happy. Like I keep saying, I'm happy that fans of these games are, are getting served, you know, so mm -hmm. good for them. I hope it's a good game. Um, but yeah, so let's move it on to the big finale. Um, this game did look amazing, but it's not, again, another game that's not for me because I'm not a platformer guy. You know, I'm old. I grew up on platformers. I love platformers as a kid, you know, obviously playing Mario and Mario 64 and stuff. And this stuff was awesome. But to me personally, I know I know this is just old man midnight yells at the clouds. But to me, I just feel like gaming has evolved past the platformer. Like I want those big I want those big RPGs. I want more cinematic stuff. I want more detailed combat and story. I don't want to just be jumping between platforms and shit. But I know that's just me. Um, you know, I'm not trying to be a hater. Um, I thought this game did look awesome. It really looked, the, the graphics are beautiful, the worlds, the elements when he's going through the water and you got like these weird metal spikes that he was parting. And I can imagine the controller here, the, the dual sense, awesome controller. I'm sure it's going to have some great haptics and stuff. I'm sure it'll be fun. It's just not a midnight type game. But I know that you guys, I think, are pretty excited about this. Um, Hodge, what do, you, what, what do you think about Astrobot? Oh, I lost my fucking shit when this started. I, I loved the, the launch title game that came with the system. I platinumed it immediately, basically, when it came out. I adore this game um, or the, the other one. And so when they showed this one, I was because I was partially like, man, I really hope that because what I loved about the the, the launch one was it kind of went through the history of all the PlayStations. Each world was a different gen. And so there's four four worlds you went through with each and it would have like little cameos from each every single little PlayStation character. You know, you go past Drake and then you go past Kratos and then you go past Solid Snake. Like it was these really cool little like uh, throwbacks to PlayStation history. And so when they are not like when they're rumoring a new one, I'm like, am I going to like it without it being like a history of PlayStation type game? I was but. I mean, this one still does a little bit. You see in the trailer, there's all the little Astro bots from different games and whatnot. You There's a giant PS5 that's like a ship and all this. So it, it still does have like the PlayStation history part of it. But the gameplay looks like they've just because the, the original was basically a tech demo for the controller where every world it showed like there's just different haptics going through the controller. Like I can't even it's hard to describe. You just have to play it to feel it because I, I when people were saying like, oh, it's going to use the 3D haptics, I'm like, who gives a shit? It's rumble. I don't, but no, you really feel through that controller. Like it's on, it's really cool how it works. And so I know that that one was basically a tech demo for the controller where this one's going to be more, hopefully expansive game that uses the haptics still, but it has a little bit more to it where it's not just like a tech demo. And so I'm really, really, really excited for this game. As you, as everyone knows, I love platformers. They're it's by far my favorite genre of game. Like I love uh, many g game types, obviously, but platformer. That's what I grew up on. Spyro is, as I said on our one episode where we said our favorite game. Spyro Two is one of my favorite games of all time. I love platformers. Jack and Daxter, uh, Mario sixty four. 
I love all that. And so having a more futuristic or uh, modern platformer with haptics and just fun gameplay, I'm so stoked for this game. I cannot wait for this game. Right on, right on. Sean, Astrobot. Oh, I'm, I'm so hyped as well. Um, Hodge, you you kind of brought it up, but they're like doubling down on the, on the aspect that Astrobot is like a game to celebrate the history of PlayStation. Mm -hmm. I mean, they showcase so many things. I mean, there was costumes that Astrobot was wearing that featured from various different games. You need to, you need to fly on a PS5 DualSense controller. They showed a PS5 without the um without the plates on it. Mm -hmm. Um, it looked so good, and I I think they're gonna take everything they did in that launch game and just take it to the next level. Um, there's rumors that it's gonna be about like almost like forty expansive levels, and I'm right there with you, Hodge. I love platformers; they're my second favorite genre, right behind JRPGs. Um, this game just looks awesome. I I liked how there was like cameos from Ratchet and Clank. There was cameos from Sly Cooper. There was some ca there was just cameos of everything. I mean, it looks cool, and I the possibilities are just going in my head. Like what if we get, go to a, play, a place and there's like an infamous one where you like get powers, like, like you're an infamous. I can mm -hmm. see that. Um, I, speaking my I, I, yeah, I think it looks really good. It, it reminds me of that, that Mario 64, like you're, you're traveling to all these different locations, but they're all so varied. Um, you know, one, one minute you're climbing a mountain in the middle of Egypt and the next year in a snowy, I don't even know, like a snowy continent. And it, it looks so good. And I'm really excited. I'm so glad that we still have these platformers coming because unfortunately we have a lot of people like Midnight or like platformers, they stink. They're for, oh, that freaking Mario, the guy running around, jumping on those Goombas. Yeah, you, no, can, make, you, can, make I, that, you can make that same argument about turn-based JRP or RPGs because that was because they didn't have the technology for combat. So you had to yeah. turn-base it. So... Yeah, those are outdated. No one should fucking do that. <laughs> I'm so glad we still have these. And I, you know, I loved the um the launch game. I also I, I thought Sackboy's Big Adventure was superior. I still need to play that. It's so good. I know. Unfortunately, I it didn't it. it didn't do as commercially well. But so like we're not going to get a sequel, which I would have loved. If they made if they made a Sackboy cross Astrobot game. I think that would have been sick. Oh. But I'm so happy that we're getting this Astrobot game, and I'm so glad that it's paying history to the PlayStation because PlayStation has such a long and immense history in gaming. I mean, guys, it's been around for 30 years. It's mm -hmm. it's wild. Dude, PlayStation One came out in 1994 in Japan. It's been 30 years, and there's so much history, and I'm I'm so happy to see this. I cannot wait to play this. Day one. Oh yeah, let's go day one for day sure one all right there you go so that was astro bot it did look good i'll give it its i'll give it its flowers there it did look good um so that wrapped up the state of play that was it that was all the 15 or whatever games that they showed um what do you guys think let's go ahead and go around i guess and give it a final rating or a final score um hodge when you start with you what are you going to rate this one so initially my initial reaction was like a three out of ten but after kind of rediscussing it and looking over it i'd say it's probably closer to like a six um because i don't like there's a lot of people who if if a, if a, a showcase just doesn't have games they don't like, they're just like, it's a shitty showcase because it's like genres they don't care about. And there's not like that one, you know, system seller that's there. And so I didn't want to do that because after rereading it, I'm like, there are a lot of games in here that a lot of people do love that there are a lot like I have no I don't care about Paths of Exile or whatever, but a lot of people love that and they want to play it or like the Elden Ring type games or so like so I'm like I can't I can't hate on it because I'm personally disinterested in it. Um but it definitely was weaker. I there's a lot of when I we were watching it along with people on Discord and stuff we're like this is pretty slow. A lot of these games don't look that good. Um and especially Concord just was kind of a I thought it was a kind of a dud to introduce the the thing 10 minutes on this game that a lot of people are down on. Um, so I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to go better than what it, cause originally, yeah, I was at like a three, but I'll go with like a six. It was okay. It, it, I, it didn't do a lot for me. Like the, the first party was barely there. Um, which yeah, is just two games. Yeah. They, they, they really, but, I mean, that's what you would expect out of state of plays though. They're not that's the thing. That's the other plays. thing is yeah. I was, cause me in my head, we're, we're heading into what used to be summer fest, like where everything, all the major reveals were happening during the mm -hmm. summer. And so to kick off the summer with a state of play instead of a showcase, I was like, 
why it's pretty like, lame. so I, I yeah i don't want to hate on it because it's it's not what i was expecting kind of thing but at the same time you should show more when you're doing a summer showcase kind of thing i would say state of play not showcase blah blah, blah. Yeah. but okay. i feel like it should have shown more than what it what it did unless they have another showcase plan for the summer i don't know but okay, it felt so. weak for a summer show Gotcha. All right. Let me go ahead and go into mine and we'll end with Sean because we can end on a high note. We want to end on a positive note because mine is going to be less positive because I also I wasn't really feeling this too much. Um, I, my rating is going to be about a five, five out of ten. Um, again, I understand that this is a state out of pl- a state of play, um, but it's also I mean, this is the summer showcase. This is E3 season, baby. Why are you doing a state out state of play? You should be doing a showcase. That's cope. That's cope to be like, oh, it's just a state of play. Why are they not bringing us a show, uh, an actual showcase? Where are the games, Sony? Where is first party? What the fuck are you guys doing? Where is Ghost of Tsushima 2? Where are, are all these games? Why cannot we not see anything that Naughty Dog's working on? Why can we not see anything? from any of your big studios really like you're just bringing us Astro Bot and Concord and that's it you're porting God of War to PC okay great I'm thrilled but uh so (laughs) super negative I guess but honestly I give it a five out of ten um there are some big games here for some people so you know there are some Silent Hill fans that's pretty big a lot of Monster Hunter fans that's big Astro Bot looked awesome that Astro Bot was the was the banger of the show um, for the, for the people who enjoy those games. And there's a lot of people that do. So that's a win. That's a W right there. Um, Concord, I thought looked very shit. Um, but maybe it'll be good. Who knows? Um, you know, hell divers was really good and people didn't see that one coming. So maybe Concord will also have a similar, uh, you know, take people by surprise. But for me personally, for midnight, this showcase wasn't doing much of anything. I might, I might literally play zero games. I'm not kidding. I'm not being facetious. I'm not being ironic or hating. I Midnight may literally play zero games from this showcase. It just wasn't for me. I'm not a horror guy. I'm not a platform guy. So I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be negative. It was kind of a five out of 10 for me. Sony, we want a showcase. We don't want to say to play. This is the summer. Okay. This is E3 season, baby. Bring some heat. What is this shit? But let's end it on a high note. Sean Mason, I know you liked it. I know this was this was for you, baby. What did you think of the showcase? Or, or I'm I, sorry, I the state it. of play. I, I liked it. Um, I think you guys had to calm down with the E3 stuff. E3 has been dead for years. No, um, this is E3 season. It's summer. No, we're we're in a different era now. We're in a different era now. Showcase a worse one, happen. you're saying? We're in a worse Whoa. era. <laughs> okay. No, sorry. Uh, ahead, that, that's classic old man clout, right? That's class old man talk, right there. Oh, it was better when I was a kid. Nope. Um, no. Um, it's the they can have showcases whenever we've had two showcases in the last three and a half years. I don't expect a Sony showcase every summer. We didn't have we had one last May. We didn't have one the year before. That's we had, a we problem, didn't have one a, I think. But I'm sorry. Why is it a problem? I don't think it's a problem because they give you two showcases in three and a half years. That's, that's me, a problem. I, don't, I want my but, console developer to talk to me. Like, what am I going to play on your console, Sony? Yeah. You know, how, with how many ga- with how many leaks there are, with how much stuff leaks, I don't blame them for not coming out and showing stuff. You're going to see GTA 6 get leaked early. People are going to be playing it early. People are going to be... We already saw a major leak from it. They don't want to show what they don't have. I don't really... Honestly, we have so many good games now. I don't really care to know what they're making. We already know they're making Ghost of the Shima 2. We already know Naughty Dog's working on a new game. And... We probably most likely that new Naughty Dog game is probably going to be great given the studio heritage. Like, I don't really, I don't need to know any more. Um, to me, I, to me, it's yeah, you guys say it's E3 season. E3 has been dead for years. We have the summer game showcase. We don't know what we're going to see there. We have no idea. We're, we'll probably get a Sony showcase at some point later in the year. But if we don't, we don't. Like, we can't, like, we, we can't bag on the state of play for it not being a showcase you can't automatically knock points off because oh it's not a showcase we, we're gonna knock points off now because it's not what i expected i can do whatever i want all right so i think oh, that yeah, was, no, you're, more, that than, was you're more than you're more than welcome well, to do that but I, I think judging something based on what you expected it to be and then it came out and it was completely different is wrong like you guys are people are saying oh it was it i had show it was should have been the showcase where they show all these things we got what they they laid out pretty clear to us it's going to be a state of play it's only going to be 35 minutes we shouldn't expect anything crazy and it's only going to show 14 games i state of plays have a history of not showing these big first party titles we're lucky we even got astrobot let's be serious 
I yes and no because well one I think I think summer showcases are good because the first time Sony skipped E3 it's because they had nothing to show it's not because they were above it like some people are saying oh they don't need E3 it's because they didn't have anything to show because they showed Spider Man and God of War for three straight years and then those came I, out and they didn't have know. anything to show and I think I, they saw I think they saw what Nintendo was doing Nintendo dropped out of E3 and they were fine and well, I think Sony said why the heck Nintendo, are we going to spend all this money. Yeah, but why Nintendo would we spend succeeds. all this money and go to E3? <laughs> That's because. But why? But I think they saw that and said, "Why would we spend all this money and go to E3 if it's not gonna if it doesn't have any, any impact on our sales?" And they saw what Nintendo did and said, "Okay." And then look at that. We saw other studios follow right along. Yeah, it's not really about E3 itself. It's about the having a, a summer because it's it's an industry thing. It's it's. I mean, that's fine if they want to evolve past it. It's evolving for the worse. I think I you should have showcases. Because it yeah. gets people hyped for your product. Because if you, just- I didn't say that they. Wait, hang on, hang on. You're misinterpreting what I said, though. I didn't say they they weren't going to have showcases, but I don't think there needs to be an arbitrary. Every single start of the summer, we have to have a showcase because everyone else does it. We have to do it, and we used to do it. Okay, they used to do a lot of things that weren't right, and we changed a lot of those things. I don't know. I think Not it's good right, to advertise fair enough. your great near near future. I think it's a smart thing to do, but that's fine. Um. I forgot. I was going to say something else. I blanked. I don't know. Oh, fair enough, guys. Fair enough. So, Sean, uh, you did. I think you did a, a decent job of uh, kind of rebuttaling against our, my my mini rant and stuff. But I don't know that you really got into what you thought of the showcase yourself. Like, what's your rating? And and I don't do give you, ratings. Do I don't. Overall? I don't rank. That. I don't. I don't give scores. You're a things. teacher. You're not going to grade it, Sean. I don't grade. No, I don't. I don't grade things that you put you know, it. You did it. Stick everyone's right. grade is everyone's grade is going to be different depending on what they enjoyed. Whatever your score right. is, that's your score. To me, a ten out of ten to me could be a four out of ten for you. I'm not saying this is a ten out of ten to me. I don't. I don't rank score. I think scores are stupid. I think reviews should all be <laughs> based on what you say and what you write. All right. Well, there you go. Um, but you did like it, though. You enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, I did. I did. I think. I think from the way I talked about a lot of the games, I think people can pick up on that. Yes, sir. All right. Well, there you go. Um, so that was it for us guys. That was the PlayStation state of play. Um, there were, like I said, 15 games or so that were showed a very, uh, wide gamut of games. I think there's something there for everyone. You got, you got your live service games, you got your platformer, you got your horror game. Um, you've got, um, another horror game. You got some VR stuff in there. You got a couple souls like games. You got God of war coming to PC, which is good. Uh, it's good to see these games, uh, spread out and reach new audiences. So all in all, even though I was, I was kind of jokingly, like when I went super hard on them, I, I was half, half being facetious and having fun. Um, it wasn't that serious, but overall I was just saying like for midnight, I'm not probably not going to play these games, but a lot of these games do have audiences. We're not going to sit here and deny that, that monster hunter is not a huge game and that silent hill is not a huge game uh so i think this was cool it was a decent it was a decent state of play um sean was more positive than we were and that's good um but it's good to have games and that's going to do it i think for us um so let's go around and final thoughts and say goodbye everybody uh hodge any final thoughts for you before we get up out of here uh no i put a new song up on youtube you should listen to it if you want oh what's it called it's called worth a shot so a song I wrote when I was super depressed back in 2020 when the world shut down. I felt like writing an optimistic song instead of a depressing one. So if anyone wants okay. to listen to that, you're welcome to. There you go. So anyone still listening to the show, check out Steve Hodge, Worth a Shot on Spotify, YouTube, and stuff it's, like that. I yeah, I changed my name to SL Hodge on there because there was another Steve Hodge already on there, and I didn't feel like getting the shit confused. <sighs> this other, this fraud, yeah. the fake Steve Hodge. Yeah. <laughs> All right, there you go. Uh, final thoughts from you, Mr. Mason? I'm oh, just happy to happy to be on another episode. I love doing these with you guys. Um, but yeah, that's it. Just gonna go enjoy the rest of my day. Um, yeah, that's about it. I got a road race next weekend, next early in the morning. Ooh, nice. How long is it? A marathon or no? If it was a marathon, you you would have already known. This is just ten miles. Okay, <laughs> ten miles. Just, just ten miles. I would die, dude. I would die at mile two. I would literally be on the side of the road. They'd have to scrape me off like the road runner. I'll throw you a sensu bean. Don't worry. <laughs> I would need one, dude. I might need two. Uh, but yeah, that's awesome, man. I hope you have a good time uh, in the race. We'll talk about that, I'm sure. Um, 
All right. And then final thoughts for me, just, uh, it was great, you know, great getting and talking to you guys. This was a good episode. Uh, we got to talk about some fun TV shows and movies. We're playing some good games and then we had a, uh, a state of play. So it's always good. I'm glad that E3 season is here. I'm looking forward to uh, summer games fest with Jeff Keeley. I'm looking forward to the, the Xbox showcase. Hopefully we get to some surprises and some fun games, um, but that's been it for us. This is games over plastic episode nine. Please clap everybody. And we're getting out of here. Bye everyone. Bye. See ya.